The residents of this bustling, dynamic metropolis have been playing at the Hong Kong Golf Club since 1889, but they've never seen anything like the Live Golf League. 54 of the best players in the world will take to its testing tees and fabulous fairways, competing for individual glory and the team championship. The Live Golf League is ready to go large in Hong Kong for the very first time, and it starts right now. Hong Kong is one of the greatest cities on the planet. When this was announced on the schedule, this was kind of one I circled I was looking forward to the most. This brings world-class golf to an area that, that wouldn't normally get it and, and is craving it. This is terrific entertainment. You know, the area, the town, the, just the, the whole vibe around this place is always amazing. I love that we're here. The town is great. Lots of good food, lots of culture, and lots to love here in Hong Kong. Hong Kong's one of the best food cities in the world. Me being Asian, <laughs> obviously I love the Asian food. Yeah, I'd be walking around, you know, eating everything I can. The golf course has a ton of history. It's got a lot of character. When you walk into the clubhouse, you look at the past winners of the Hong Kong Open, and it has a long history of great winners around a good golf course. This will be a new challenge for a lot of guys that have never played Fan Lane. It's a little bit more tricky. You gotta be in, in position all the time. You cannot be too aggressive of the tee. It's not about how far you hit it, it's where you put it. You have to be patient, make your pars when needed, and then attack when the opportunity presents itself. The whole city and the fans, like they want to see golfers come. They want to see the best players in the world come. Anytime you can get, you know, Rom and Cam and Brooks, DJ, those guys to, to come out and play is pretty awesome. This has got all the ingredients for an absolutely wonderful week. Just three events into the 2024 Live Golf League season, and Waco Neiman has announced himself as one of the best players on the planet. But his wins in Mayakoba and Jeddah have only incentivized our major winning golfing giants. John Rahm, Dustin Johnson, Cam Smith, and Brooks Kepka are amongst those primed. And so is Bryson DeChambeau, whose crush has produced the greatest comeback win in Live Golf team history a week ago. Our shotgun start is moments away. Hello, everybody, from Arlo White and from David Fairty, of course. Welcome to the gem that is the Hong Kong Golf Club. This is one of the highlights of the entire season here in the Live Golf League circuit. And we've got to start, David, with one man. Yeah. In the form of his life, as he says, just a sublime performance last week in Jeddah to take his second in our opening three events. Wako Neiman is in great form. What impressed you the most in how he closed it out in Jeddah compared to his first win of the season in Mexico? Well, he's the, he's the hottest player in the world with the offseason that he had. And then at Mayakoba, he gets a two-shot penalty, you know, before the, the last round. Still leads by two, but I think that unnerved him a little bit. And he was shaky starting off, eventually lost lost the lead and uh, ended up getting it back and uh, knocking this one in in, uh, in the playoff in the dark <laughs> you know so uh, the two wins were entirely different last week um, he, he was just superb from start to finish it was a great piece of front running uh, anytime someone made a birdie against him you know he went right back at them with one of his own. Yeah. It really was very impressive. Final round of 66, he said that birdie there at 17 just enabled him to chill out as he went down 18 to close things out. And in the end, he won it by four shots, didn't he? So a great performance by Wacko, a pretty decent performance by this man. At the other end of his career, Phil Mickelson, his uh, best ever live golf performance, tied sixth in Jeddah. Is this the sort of course, David, that will suit Phil? I think it is. It's a thinker's golf course. You know, you've got to think about what you're going to hit off the tee and leave yourself into the green. There's a lot of slopes, um, a lot of trees you can either carry or, or hit to the right or left off. 
It's a, it's a shot maker's golf course. I hate ball striker. You know, they're all ball striker's <laughs> golf course. you got to hit shots around this golf course, and he can do it. Certainly can. He's got that new putter in his hands as well, hasn't he? A 10 under par over three rounds for Phil. And he's in terrific form. The rest of the Live Golf broadcast team, they are chomping at the bit to speak to all of you. We'll bring in Jerry Fault, Suan Heng, and Hong Kong's own Dom Boulay next. Well, the sun is shining. We've had a little bit of uh, fog and uh, mizzle and cloud around, but it's a beautiful day for day one here. And look at the crowds flocking through the entrances here. Excellent crowds expected. And it's a very tight golf course. So the players are going to be greeted with a real buzz for the shotgun start, which is just less than nine minutes away. Beautiful property, Jerry, isn't it? Beautiful city in general. I mean, you heard all the players speak so reverently about coming to Hong Kong. It's my first time here, and I'm in love with it already. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing little oasis in the middle of this enormously tall city. Really a special place. And I don't think we'll ever stay in another hotel 115 floors in the air, Arlo. <laughs> yeah, no. no, the hotel starts at floor 103. That's uh, yeah. been a, a unique experience. Thought of KGC on X, they all came to watch Tor K. No proof, also no doubts. Well, they've certainly got <laughs> the main man in the Live Golf League at the moment in their ranks in Waco Neiman. Yeah, the weather wasn't supposed to be quite this nice today. It's mild temperatures, maybe maxing out at 69, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, well, it's supposed to be a little more overcast, but like I've said all along, the weather gods are Live Golf fans. They love their sport in this part of the world. The Hong Kong Sevens rugby is a is a huge event each year. Lots of soccer teams come and play pre-season games, in-season friendlies as well to packed crowds. Massive clubhouse. There's rumors Don Boulay has been lost in there on many occasions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The magnificent Hong Kong Golf Club. What a backdrop we have. The city of Hong Kong. We're in the Fanling area here. It's a beautiful golf course. Jerry Foltz has joined us. Good morning uh, to you, Jerry. I want to talk a little bit. We're giving a lot of love to Waco Neiman, and rightly so because of the yeah. form that he's in. But John Rahm is the only man with three consecutive top 10 finishes this season. Could this be the breakthrough tournament that he sees the deal through? Any day uh, John Rahm tees it up, David, anywhere he tees it up, uh, even if he's not playing his best, he can win. Without question, he can win. And to think that uh, he's overdue after finishing having three <laughs> top tens, like I said, it is an absolute shock when he doesn't have a top ten, especially in Live Golf League against 54 players. Um, but, yeah, he can win every, any single week. And I'm not sure this course doesn't fit his game because he's so darn precise. Yeah, he is precise. But, you know, the top three that we've got here, Joaquin Neiman, Dustin Johnson, and John Rahm, the top three in the Live League, they're all long hitters. I think it doesn't really suit them as much as uh, the courses that we've played so far because, you know, you, you, if you hit the ball a long way here, you're liable to find trouble. So I think it brings a different... Uh, player into the bandwidth, if you like, you know the guys that don't hit it so far. The shot makers, that mm. like yeah. To, I mean, you can you can make a case for a, a Graham McDowell playing yeah. well here, somebody who's really precise with the irons. You got to be able to work the ball both ways, which he can. Bubba uh, Watson. Bubba Watson, very yeah. good, even though he's a long hitter. Yeah. Yes. Graham McDowell's had a couple of top five finishes in the Hong Kong Open, yeah. so you never know. Now the team contest, we had one for the ages, didn't we, on Sunday in Jeddah? Would you believe it? Stinger GC had a seven-shot lead going into the final round. That was ten pretty soon after the shotgun start. And in the end, they lost by four to a resurgent crushers. Louis and Charles finished tied second place. All four players were in the top 15, including Brandon Grace. And Suan caught up with him a few moments ago. 
It's a beautiful day here in Hong Kong. We're about to get day one on the road. I'm on the putting green and I've got a member of Stinger GC, a team that came so close last week in Jeddah. Brandon Grace, thank you so much for joining me. Stingers, last week you guys were in the lead seven shot lead going into the final yeah. day and then it was a 10 shot lead at some point how disappointed were you guys with the results oh, time. we um we kind of ran into a wall um but you know it's we actually spoke about it in the car on the way yeah i think we were 34 at a stage and they were 30 and then a whole later they were 36 and we were 34 you know they um gained like four well a couple of shots in um, in one hole but it was um it was brutal you know um I almost feel like we need to be the opposite way. You know, if we can get behind a few and um, we great, um, great fighters out there, um, and then we can really push from there on in. What's the key to be the opposite way, as you say? Um, I don't know. I think, um, you know, 10 shot leads a lot, you know, you um, or eight shot lead, whatever it was, you know, you kind of think sometimes you relax. Um, you know, it's, t it's tough. We actually felt like we all played really well. Boomy and I didn't have the, the best of days. Um, we still had fairly decent days out there, but um, didn't really do much wrong. Um, it's just it's just hard when um, when a team like the Crushers just go all out and they make everything. And like I said, you're running into a wall. Well, thank you for your chat and uh, play well today. Thank Good luck. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you to Suan. Uh, all four scores counting on Sunday in the Live Golf League in the team competition has led to some wild finishes, but I don't think we've seen anything quite as impressive as the Crushers as a collective four in hunting down Stinger in Jeddah and taking out the victory. That was something quite special. You know, David, I think for the first time in golf, other than the Ryder Cup or President's Cup, certainly the Ryder Cup, for the first time in golf we saw what you see in other team sports, and that was momentum actually catching on with that team, all competing at the same time, different parts of the course, watching the leader boards and I think they fed off each other and I think the little internal panic uh, the opposite ha happened for the stingers yeah I don't think there's any question they inspired each other yeah. and uh, you know people say you know I'm not a leaderboard watcher every great player <laughs> is a leaderboard watcher you need to know where you are so they you know ex knew exactly where they were and exactly what they had to do yeah and, and being a team sport as well uh, there are no team sports where you're not watching the scoreboard. Yeah. And, and being a team sport as well now in golf, they, those guys are. See, if they're not concerned about where they're finishing because they might not be in the hunt, they're concerned where the team's finishing yeah. if they have a chance. Louis Eustazen said he was watching the scoreboard all day and he couldn't believe what he yeah. was seeing. And he said, look, the Crushers went 20 under par. There is nothing that you can do about that. And as Brandon Grace just mentioned there to Sue Ann, the Stingers just uh, hit a wall. What makes this golf course special? Well, I think it's a combination of things. You know, it's, it's in a tight space. It's like a botanical garden that somebody put a golf course on. It really is. You know, it's magnificent. It's been here for so long. The trees are incredibly tall. These paper barks that we'll see lining the fairways. Uh, and the fairways have a slope to them one way or the other. There's a camber in there. So uh, somebody like a Bubba Watson that can shape the ball both ways, you know, is going to like this golf course. Well, traditional it's, golf. It's just traditional yeah. Yeah. style golf that players of all skill levels love, but especially the, the most skilled. Yeah. Well, let's find out from our uh, course analysts what to watch for. In a moment, we'll uh, get the thoughts of Suan Heng. But Don Belay, congratulations to you. I know this is a very, very proud week for you. You're all smiles. You've had a very busy week, but you're also following Waco neighbor today yeah in my opinion he's the best golfer in the world right now and this course suits him perfectly Arlo you know the holes like one seven nine fourteen sixteen you need to shape your ball he can do that there's also other holes where you need to hit a stinger he can do that if he puts half decently I can't see him shooting less than 15 under he's gonna be in the mix come Sunday one thing you might notice players will do this week is keeping that ball below the hole. This is an old school style golf course. A lot of the greens slope back to front. They're small. I spoke to Ricky Elliott earlier and he said, you know, if you have it pin high, you're going to get big breaking putts. If you leave it long, they're going to be quick, quick putts from back there. So the key this week is to keep the ball below the hole. Great stuff. Suan and Dom and the Galleries are flocking into the Hong Kong Golf Club as well. The sun is beating down. We're less than a minute away from our shotgun start. We've got Waco looking cool, calm and collected. Top left, he's the man in form. Handshake from our CEO and Commissioner, Greg Norman. Top right, Brooks Kepka. All nine rounds so far this season in the 60s. It doesn't feel like he's necessarily challenged for an individual title, although he has captain smashed a victory in Vegas. Those three top ten finishes for John. 
John Rahm. He's been in the mix going into Championship Sunday on all three events so far, but just not quite got the job done. And our reigning champion, of course, bottom right, another Smash GC member, Taylor Gooch, who is fourth in this season's overall standings. There's only one place to start, and it's watching Marco Neiman teared off. Victorious in Mexico to start the season. He got an invite into the Masters. He's in the PGA Championship as well and also qualified for the Open after winning the Australian Open before Christmas. And then victorious, of course, in Jeddah by four shots last weekend. Can he carry on that form into Hong Kong? Waco Neiman gets us underway. The scary part is Waco said he's playing the best golf of his life right now. Oh, look at that little burning, stinging yeah. fade. And next on the team, please welcome the captain of Rippers. Brooks on the par three second up the hill. Beautiful set of par threes here at Fan Ling. Nice. There's a nice one to start. Cam Smith, second place in the Hong Kong Open last year. It'll be interesting to see how he does with the driver. He said himself that it's been frustrating for him. Good one there. And then welcome the captain of Crusher's GC, Bryson DeChambeau. Dustin Johnson with, uh, well, that looks like a very lofted fairway wood on the tee high above the third fairway, and that needs to fade. Yeah, that's deep and dark in there, but I think that's all right. Yeah. Back to the first for Bryson. And I'm not sure that we'll see a whole lot of drivers out of Bryson this week. And they're off. Well, Bryson's last five rounds have included two 62s and a 63. In terrific form. As is this man, Phil Mickelson, tied for sixth in Jeddah last weekend. His best live golf result thus far. John Rahm off the third tee. Have a day, boys. <laughs> Huge drop, more than 100 feet down to the fairway. Uh, it's not on the fairway, but should be okay. Well, that's pretty spectacular. Yeah, yeah. They've been playing golf on this uh, property since 1889. This current course at Fanling designed in 1911. It's been hosting the Hong Kong Open for over six decades. Martin Keimer, captain of the cliques, teeing off at eight. Yeah, another guy we have. Oh. Oh, 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 another guy we haven't talked about a lot, haven't heard from. But if his game is on form, there is no reason why Martin Keimer couldn't figure into things on this course this week. Yeah, he is one of the shorter hitters, but, you know, he's a man with two major championships. And is really overdue to come into form. Well, people around the world tuning in at various different times of the day, depending on your whereabouts on the planet. Picking your winners, Ram or DJ, I think for this course, is the Real Blue Company, Man Like G, Anthony Kim and the Crushers. Well, Anthony Kim, of course, returned to competitive golf for the first time in almost 12 years. And although it didn't quite go the way that he wanted it to on the scorecard, he said he was hitting the ball well and he's hugely encouraged. And on Saturday, he parred the final 11 holes. And on Sunday, he was level par for the final 11 holes. So something to build on. Henrik Stenson of the Majestics, his second shot at four. That's wrong, 
You see this grain raised up. A lot of these grains will fall off on three sides, especially at the front if it spins. That's nice. Let's take you to the second green, Sue Ann. You're watching Sergio put for birdie. Hi, I'm Arlo. Now, this part of his game have been holding him back last season as well as this season. His ball striking is not the issue. If this club cooperates this week, watch out. To the first, in the right rough. Dom, yeah. you're watching Bryson. I am. He must have hit a five-wood off the tee, and, uh, well, he can't take his normal trajectory with which, whichever club he's using, so he's got to go under the branches, which are about 10 yards in front of him. 36 is... is like 10.30. Yeah, 10.30. Yeah, he's got to yeah, land it on the front edge, the furthest. Depends on how low he hits it. The lower he hits it, the shorter he's got to land it. Can't go for the pin. Got to play to the middle of the green. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of this. Oh, Players it's cutting in beautifully. And recovery shots. Okay. Well, he managed to fly it all the way there and hold the green. Phil Mickelson on the green at two for birdie. Put that new putter in last week. Worked well for him. Arlo, you mentioned he had his best finish. Tight sixth in Jetta. Uh, you did that well, go. Back to the first for Cam. Oh, if he continues to drive it like he just did on that opening hole, he will be a hard man to catch around here. Beautiful tee shot. Slightly uphill lie, ball below his feet, has got a seven iron. Start it to the middle. He can try and just let it drift in. Uh, it's, it looks like it's just going to stay there. Samoya has this to get his day off to a good start. Birdie at number 12. He, the medalist, the winner of Live Golf Promotions 2023 and Abu Dhabi to earn his way into the Live Golf League this year. Oh, Wako Neiman here, second shot out of the rough, the indigenous grass. We call it cow grass, prone to flyers. Also very safe. But looks like better distance. No, it's just to the front. Tyrrell Hatton, his second shot at 17. Oh. 16th place in the overall standings. Tied 8th in his opening events in Mayakoba. Tied 12th and a tied 15th in Jeddah for Tyrrell Hatton. So a very solid start to his live golf career. Brooks Kepka with an early miss. And they'll have to settle for par at the second. John Rahm, his second shot at three. They overturn it. Yeah. Oh, that's just in, in the front of the bunker and short sided. That may be awkward. <laughs> Scott Vincent over to the line. Beautiful. Now look out for the South Africans this week. These are grainy, grainy greens. You can see the patch there. It's running parallel. That's into the grain. But the South Africans read these grainy greens pretty much better than anybody else. Maybe the Australians too. Well, maybe the only man who reads the greens any better would be Don Boulay. Yeah. Uh, this is his home course. And a little earlier on in the pre-game show that Jerry was a part of, Dom and Sue Ann talked about how special this course is. How cool is it 
to have a home game at your home club and how good is it for golf here in Hong Kong? Well, I mean, this whole process of getting Liv to Hong Kong started about a year ago and to be honest with you, I never thought it would happen, but here we are and it is massive. Golf is, like you said, it's, golf is big in Asia, golf is big in Hong Kong. We have over 60,000 golfers and we don't have that many facilities and uh, to have 54 the best players in the world for them to watch is incredibly exciting. This is the green at one, Waco for birdie. Your I name's see. on the honours board, Dom. We saw well, in the pre-game show as well. Yeah, we saw that. It was a poor second shot from a good lie and not very far away. He's he's put himself in three-putt territory. Uh, you put pressure on me. I've got to read every putt correctly this week, <laughs> it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here goes. Now, this one will move a little to his left at the very beginning but not too much because of the pace it's going to be at but certainly the last 15 feet or so it's going to break from his left quite significantly Dustin Johnson is second shot at three uh, winner the only winner this season not called Joaquin. That was in Las Vegas in event number two. And he has started beautifully here in Hong Kong. Over at four, Kevin Na on the live line. Oh yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Young Caleb Surratt for birdie at 14. This was earlier. He's off to a good start. And back to the green at one and Cam for birdie. Yeah, from anything behind this hole, it's pretty much a defensive putt. Just trying to trickle it down there. Led the field in putting in Jeddah last week, but tied for 41st overall. Let's uh, get you caught up elsewhere. Hudson Swafford, who is one of our two wild cards with Anthony Kim in the field for the season. That was for birdie at 12. Likewise, Sam Horsfield for the Majestics, who need a performance after a 13th place finish in Jeddah last weekend, but Horsfield's in decent form. He's one under par after that birdie at 12. Hendrik Stenson at the fourth. Now Bryson for birdie at one. In a similar position to Cam Smith, he sort of wasn't as quick as Cam thought, so maybe a little more aggressive here for Bryson. Certainly going to get there. Oh, that's what happens when you're on the wrong side. Patrick Reed at 17 for birdie. Just fell away in Jeddah last weekend. Patrick Reed after a 65 in the opening round. This is DJ for birdie at three. It's like a little wider stance. He said this week, these greens fit my eye. Feels like he's in very good form. That's yeah. Hatton for birdie at 17. Seeing a lot of pretty short birdie putts start our day here, David. Is that what we're getting for for three days? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. These guys uh, should be able to take advantage of this perfect weather, apart from anything else. There's virtually no breeze out there. Only two par fives on the course. It's composite course, three and 13. This for birdie for Rahm on the first one he'll play.
terrific start for John Rahm, seeking his first Live Golf title. Will he come here in Hong Kong? We shall see. Well, this won't take long. Matt Jones for birdie at nine. Mm -hmm. The Aussie knocks that one in. ¿Ves el gap que hay entre los árboles? Ese es el centro green. Sebastian Munoz on the tier eight of Torque GC. All nine rounds under par so far this season, but a best, best finish of tied ninth in Las Vegas. False front there. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a pretty good shot and not a great result. That's what can happen here. All these little runoffs around these greens. Brendan Steele teed off at 13, and this is for Eagle. Didn't you have breakfast with Brendan this morning, Jerry? Well, we, we didn't sit at the same table. We were in the same room, player dining. It's a pretty nice place. Yeah. You should try it sometime. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I have to set that alarm a little earlier. Tell them you know me. <laughs> <laughs> the second tee. It's uh, 150 with the uphill to the hole. Dom, feels like there's a buzz out there. Yeah, four short would be good, 46. It should be help when your second shot there was hurt when, so uh, if you were, if you were going with hurt when it's southeast, Southeast here yeah, is left to right. It should be this out of your east. Tee. It should be help. Uh, definitely. It's definitely. I, I, I cannot believe that they can be hurt. So. You lay there? Yes, I do. Uh, Gary Matthews. I was caddy talking about wind. I don't feel anything out here. The scores are going to be low out here, guys, if it stays like this. And it's soft, softer than we would like it. But the humidity was so high during the first couple of days of the week. There's just a lot of moisture in the ground. Now, 146 yards. Can't be sure. Well, very conservative. Oh, yeah. Good shot. He'll have a downhill left to right putt. That's Martin Keimer from the fairway at number nine. Nice rhythmic swing there from Martin. This is getting better and yeah. better. Nearly perfect. Smith here on the second tee. He knows this course pretty well. Played it twice in the Hong Kong Open just last November. Was tied for the lead on the 72nd hole. Lost to Campbell in Wooden when Campbell birdied. Oh, this, where is this? Oh, that is a big mistake. Bunker. Brooks, his second shot at three, Suan. He's got seven iron, winds down and off the left. He needs to draw this one to the left hole location today. Good shot into the par five. And back to the second on for Bryson. Can't wait to see how he tackles this golf course. Pitching wedge, can't be a big one either. Yeah, looks really good. Yeah. 
It's a good little golf course here. It is, isn't it? It's cool. Sergio, second shot at three. He absolutely plastered that drive, got down that hill. This is a downhill lie, though. You can't see the pin from where he is. Can't be more than a short iron. Yeah, that was... That had to be a miss hit. Not much green to work with there. Need to just snip one off the top with some spin. Here's Rahm at the fourth. Now, DJ. This is another one of those false fronts at the green here. Ron played it beautifully, pitched it behind the hole. Stay there. That is a difficulty, isn't it, Dave? You want to stay below the hole. hole. On these old style greens, but you don't yeah. want it running all the way down the fairway. Tough one here, Dom, for Cam. Early test of his magnificent short game. He's got to land it on the green. He's only got five, five and a half yards of green to work with. <laughs> Bubba Watson for birdie at five. Rolls that one in nicely. Now that's an aerial view of the second green. It'll be Neiman and his turn for birdie. You can see those runoffs all around the green there. It can upturn saucer. Led by two going into the final round last weekend. He carded a 66 to win by four shots. That was padded by birdies at 17 and 18. It was always in the balance for, for most of the second round, but Louis Eustazen and Charles Schwartzel couldn't quite lay a glove on him. Yeah, the only time he looked like he showed any waiver whatsoever was his layup on the final hole with the <laughs> yeah. pitching wedge on the par five. Nearly hosled it. And he even talked about it afterwards. It was solid, solid golf. Oh, come on. The first hello, Neiman, has been thrown out. <laughs> yeah. All right, there you are. Well, that is the sort of form that Waco Neiman is in. Terrell Patton, his second at the 18th hole. Pretty hole. Yeah. Laid it well back off the tee, that upper plateau. Back to two and Cam for par. Yeah, and a long one. He he left himself in the worst position he could on the second hole in that bunker, ten feet below the surface of the green, coming over the high part of the green to the shoulder just to the right short of this pin not much spin on that bunker shot released out so yeah, yeah. he's got 15 feet uh, I thought you know he was on the upslope wasn't he Dom I thought he might have got more on that yeah it's very surprised David but this is what he does best making these for par Next to four and DJ for birdie. Got a live line going already. 
just a little bit outside the right edge of the hole on the initial start line. He was above that. Needs to be soft. Well, golf fans all over the world are downloading the Live Golf Plus app, and for very good reason. You can enjoy all the content the league has to offer. You can watch live and commercial free in selected markets. You can also rewatch every single round of Live Golf since day one, as well as feature content including Live Lessons, Hang Time, and What the Fair Hitty. On Saturday, you can also watch Live Golf on the CW in the USA on tape delay from 12:30 to 5:30 p.m. Eastern time. Bryson for birdie at two. That was a complete misread. Yeah, it was. And I have to say, I probably would have misread that too. You know, it looked as if it was a cross grain. Didn't move. Brooks had three for Eagle. Long range, all about speed. A moment ago, Louis Oosthuizen for birdie at four. Equaled his best live golf performance with a tied second in Jeddah last weekend. This is live at four. John Rahm for back-to-back -back birdies. He's two under in the early going here at the Hong Kong Golf Club. <coughs> at three, Sue Ann, this is for par for Phil? Yeah, it is, Jerry. He had a second shot. Kicked the down slope to the back of the green and caught the water on the 18th. Dropped it and pitched it to this point. Wow, that overcome. was a hard bunch it took. Oh, yeah. It's quite a long it's way to that water. Yeah, it's pretty firm in the back of the green. He just overcooked his five iron from the left rough. Now this one left to right. Off the third tee, Neiman with just a three wood, it looks like. Marty Keimer made his birdie at nine. The cliques going well in the early stages, three ah. under par. HV3 for birdie at 17. Look at the change of grain there. Yeah, a bunch of them. <laughs> That's a great read. Yeah, as far as the left side. Oh boy. Here we go. Left, it actually gets to left, it actually gets to it has a chance to just get to where it's dry. So it's not like if we take three wood that we eliminate both sides. Can we, I get past the hazard and everything or is there no hazard? There's a hazard at about the same distance as the bunker. Okay. So I, I like I like just like a solid one of those. I don't think that's He's, He's got driver. He's got driver. There's a little stream that runs very close to the fairway yeah. down the right hand side here. Yeah, it uh, cuts in hard from the right. If he gets a, you know, if he's over that bunker and he hits the downslope, that stream is very much in play. If you are on a balcony in one of those buildings, I just keep half an eye out. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Bongo only pawn and game of life. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get down to the flat, guys? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he oh, might be past my the flat. He's got to have a wedge in. <laughs> That's huge. John Rahm has started superbly. Here he is at the tee at five. <laughs> Sergio had this for birdie at three. Back on the tee, Cam Smith. Had trouble with his tee shot in the Hong Kong Open. Turn it over left a couple of times. Fucking trust it, Cam. Fuck with. That's right Fuck there. <laughs> oh, 
Well, here's uh, Cam talking about the things that he really needs to clean up in his game. Honest as ever, say Ripper GC on Instagram. There's no question that I need to get myself on the fairway more often. Case in point, just a few moments ago. It's frustrating, but I'm working hard on fixing it. Thank you. Well, Brooks left himself. Just an awkward one here for... That's a birdie. <laughs> Elsewhere, Danny Lee, who... Won in Tucson in a playoff last year, his first live golf season. Only one more point thereafter. That was a good finish in Singapore, but it's a good start for him here. That was birdie at 13. Kelly Samoya to get it to two under par. That was his third shot at 13, where he would make his second birdie of the day. Well, now here's this fourth hole, which is a hard dog leg to the right. And this, this could be any club. Phil said that he might might consider hitting seven iron off the tee. That looked like a mid iron from Brooks. Yeah. Just put it in the right spot. Sergio now next to hit, also laying up. It is 205 to the left side bunker. No point going for the screen. It takes, brings bogey into play. Well, Louis Oosthuizen has been a world-class player for decades. The 2010 Open champion has played, won and entertained golf fans across the globe. This week, he was out there hanging with Sue Ann Heng. Welcome to Hang Time. This week, we're here at the historic Hong Kong Golf Club, and I've got Louis Oosthuizen, the captain of Stinger GC. We're here at the 6th, we're going to watch him play it and we're going to have a chat. Let's do this. Do you ever get tired of people telling you how smooth your golf swing is? He just swings the club so beautifully. The rhythm has always been sort of a thing that my swing was always based around. I never, never someone that's swinging at big club head speed or, or get ball, big ball speed. So it was always the timing bit and the striking of the golf ball that was the main thing for me. Well, you don't strike me as a very technical player at all. Have you always been that way or did you grow into that type of a player? At a young age, my coach, Juan Tucker, really got me into doing the basic things right. A lot of guys like to know where the club it should be, a lot of guys like to feel the club. I, I'm all as a body movement. My coach always knows, tell me where you want the golf club, what you want to be the feeling, and then I'll figure that out to get it there. Sort of more on feel than anything. So there's more than meets the eye with Louis Um Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things going on here when you... It doesn't seem that way when no, you're walking the golf course. Right? This is a moment ago on the the tier four pack gallery on the left hand side. Coming off that bogey. Yeah, that's a painful bogey at the par five. I hear you. Uh, it's 200. So, to, it's 200 to carry the bunker. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this. The rescue, I mean, because the rescue, I mean, it comes hot. It comes hot. Mean, let's say it's normal, normal deep, deep, normal deep, and then normal deep, and then it just releases in that bunker a little more. If, if it what into the right bunker, yeah. you're okay. But I mean, if it goes past, it's not it, great. It, it's not great, no. And it's I mean, I, the, 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 this wind is helping right now. You feel that? I mean, yeah, this I feel like this going... grass is light, but it's light. Yes. All right, 200 carry, huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's talking about aiming to the right, which is the right play. Cannot go for the pin. He's not got a great light. To be honest, just hit a low one, land it next to that fairway bunker, let it run to the front, front right of the green. That's the play. Five iron. Well, he's going high. Well, that's kind of where he's playing for, that front right portion. Uh, that's OK. Yeah, uh, Bryson, uh, is Bryson going to call them through? 
had it at 116 yards ahead of Waco was Bryson. That's Richard Bland on the tee at eight. Very, very nicely done. John Rahm for three consecutive birdies. This is at the fifth. Anthony Kim, AK. We welcome him back to competitive golf in Jeddah last week. This is at the tee at 12. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. Anthony actually had his clubs fitted for the first time earlier this week, and they were uh, shocking to him. They were well too much upright, David. And yeah. All, all his good shots, he said, went left last week, and that never happens to him. So expect a little better out of him ball striking wise this week. Kelly Samoya there, a nice one. It's 149 yards. Down off the road. Just hit that 400. 163. Cover at it. I mean, we're going just a hair right. Cover at it. It was 57. I don't know, but you play it if it's still doing that. And you can see the front of these trees, the trees we're looking at right in front of us are bouncing that direction, so it is helping right now. This will be one of his 14 wedges. <laughs> you want to just like take a little something off something just to take the wind out of the play a little bit? Yeah. Just are you talking about like cross? What do you mean by neutral? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Got a little wind off our right. Pitching wedge it is. The and hole's 551, Dom. That's to the middle of the green. Pins back a little bit today. So this is about a 410 drive. Yep. And nothing but the pin he's looking at. I heard Phil hit the back of the green wet in the water. That happens, but not with a pitching wedge. Just a bit shy. Marty Keimer at the 10. Another good one from the German. DJ for par at five. Slipped down the leaderboard in Jeddah last weekend after an excellent opening round of 66 said the putter let him down, but he's very happy with his general game and he stays level par. Anthony Kim over 12, this for birdie. Good aggressive stroke. I talked to him the other day. It's for a, bit a bit too much so. Yeah, he got off to horrible starts all yep. three rounds last week. He's already done the same today. Straight off the right, you just aim a little bit right of it. Okay, coming down on the mate. Kind of like in the, in the green shirt there. Okay, happy. Call your five change. Still happy with that right now. You know, even though Cam Smith here on the third, playing his third, he's about 80 yards behind Neiman. It's almost an easier shot. Why is that? Because he's hitting a full club and it's going to have lots of spin. Neiman is coming over the high part of the, the edge of the bunker there. And he's got no room to work with landing on a downslope. Anthony Kim did pop that one in at 12. It's got to go a little bit. Oh. Henrik Stenson. This is the sixth green. This for birdie for the Swede. Kelly Samoya has started beautifully here in the Hong Kong sunshine. This for a third birdie of his opening round so far. 
and he is an early leader on three under par. He's birded 12, 13, and 14. Martin Keimer. Oh. A bit of a dribble. Now, Joachim Neiman didn't fly that second shot far enough, so he's not much room. He's got to land it right next to Cam's ball. Beautiful. Next to the green, add four on the live line. Suan is filled for birdie. He took an aggressive play off the tee, got it pretty close to the green. Nice little pitch, but this one's going to move a fair bit for Phil. Yonichiro Kazuma of the Ironheads. Well, this is an eagle putt, and he makes it. That was at 14. The cliques have started in sensational style. They're six under par. This is Richard Bland, one of their stalwarts for birdie at eight. Yeah, uh, Bryson on the upslope here. Yeah, easy shot. Poor second, but yeah. should make birdie, if not better. That's what you'd expect. Bubba for birdie at six. Well, do you have a favorite Live Golf League team yet? Now you can represent with pride thanks to the great merchandise available at shop.livegolf.com the Live Golf online store. Grab a Legion 13 cap, a Stinger's quarter zip, a Crusher's t-shirt, or a four aces polo. 13 teams, 54 players, all the gear to make you the envy of your weekend foursome. Hong Kong do like a themed bit of merch, don't they? This is the uh, the Hong Kong themed t-shirt for the four aces. They're in Hong Kong for the first time to mark the occasion. We've created some unique merch for you to get your hands on as the Dragon Zodiac symbolizes strength, honor, and success. It's a perfect fit for the aces, who, by the way, have finished out of the points in two of the opening three events of the season, which is as many times as they finished outside of the points in the whole of last season. Yeah, who'd have thunk it? Cam Smith longer birdie putt than he would have had in mind on standing on the tee. Not the start we expected from this fella. Yeah. One over after three. That's not good. Early going here, but Calais Samoya from Finland, who won the promotions event in Abu Dhabi, which is golf's equivalent of Willy Wonka's golden ticket. Well, he's running hot. That was for birdie at 12, where he teed off. This is his third shot into 13, and that's another birdie for Samoya. And he made it three in a row with birdie at 14, the par four. So. Very early on, three holes played for Kelly Samoya. He's three on the par. Brandon Grace at number eight. Very nice. Back to the green at three, and it'll be Waco. Joaquin Neiman for birdie. It's quick, this one. Do you even have to take a look at him, Dom? Or, I mean, you can read these from the clubhouse. I can, but uh, there's a little trepidation right now, Jerry, that I get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah one of us won't let you forget it if you do. I know, that's why. <laughs> there's not much in this, maybe. Where's he aiming? A touch left? Doesn't look like it. Okay, just needs to get it moving. Green is helping him. He's human. 
moment ago on the tee at five, Brooks Kepka. Bottom left of your screen is the, the top of the team pylon, and the Majestics are there in the early running on four under par in a tie for second place, looking for a first podium finish in 19 events. We're seeing a picture, Dom, of you teaching uh, Henrik Stenson about golf. <laughs> He's, I believe, Dom, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're uh, trying to explain some of the intricacies of one of the greens there. Sorry, guys, I was talking to Greg Norman. <laughs> That's wasn't, okay. Wasn't listening to you. Yes, I heard him describe you've, it earlier. You've got he your was, priorities right, Dom, to be honest. Yeah, good point. Yeah, he was uh, explaining to... Henrik Stenson that one of the greens, I believe is was the 17th, just doesn't break as much as the players typically see. And there's a lot of, you know, obviously with the Hong Kong Open, they've had a lot of history here. Yeah, there's a lot of intricacies to these greens. I've seen them all. Bryson for birdie. Hole number six and Louis Oosthuizen. Teed off at three, birdied that a couple of pars since for the Stingers captain. Team competition, three of the four scores count towards the team totals on the opening two days, today and tomorrow, then Championship Sunday. And Louis knows all about this, a free-for-all, all four scores counting, which can lead to incredible drama and volatility in that competition, as we saw in Jeddah with that incredible comeback by the Crushers. Oh, Sergio at five, so close. The overall season team standings, bottom right of your screen, the Crushers, by virtue of that victory, take the lead, smash, finished uh, first in Vegas in event number two, third last week, so a couple of podiums for Brooks Kepka's team there in second place, and Legion 13, a third, John Rahm and his expansion team on our opening event of the season in Mexico. You can see as the drone gets higher there, this, how sharp this dog leg is at the fourth. And why the players Just are like a medium one, right? off the tee. Yeah, perfect. Well, he told me in the practice round, as Caddy did, uh, that he might go for the green with a four iron or to the front edge, but doesn't look like that's the play. And this is the sensible play. You can get in so much trouble if you go for the green. Ooh. You know, for him, it's a nine iron and a little flip of a wedge. He's going to play this in one or two under for three days. Kelly Samoya, his second at 15, working on three in a row. The Scandinavians, they tell Finnish jokes like the rest of the world tells Irish jokes. <laughs> you know, how can you tell when a Finn is an extrovert? He stares at your shoes when he's talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> They're great people. Happiest country in the world, Finland. Could be even happy if he taps that in for a fourth straight birdie. Yeah. White go off the tee at four. Yeah, that looks ideal. You want to hit it in between those two bunkers. Anything yeah, right, right, you can get blocked out by the trees. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's go, Johnny. Oh. Just a little wedge for Rahm at six. Perfect distance. Back to Cam Smith on the tier four. Uh, he's been stuck on the downswing a couple of times. That one on two with a wedge. That was a very poor swing. Well, you've never seen that pre-shot routine from Cam before. That little half back swing. That's a good one. 
Well, Calais Samoya of Finland is the early pace setter. So are his cliques with a two stroke advantage. But John Rahm has started like a... ominously well here in Hong Kong. I think I don't know. Yeah, it's too much of a banana. And then if you accidentally yeah. overcut it in here. Chinio Chakara, second at the par five, number 13. Haven't heard much from him this season yet, or much at last. Well, that'll help. Yeah. You know, Dave, when we look at that bottom left, the current team leaderboard, we see we see teams that aren't powerhouses or, or that reside on the podium uh, very often. And I think this course just might be kind of a great equalizer. Yeah, yeah, I think it brings a different player into the bandwidth. You've really got to think your way around here, what you're going to leave yourself for your second shot. To the green at six and Louis Oosthuizen for birdie. Yeah, I wasn't too pleased with that little sand wedge from 113 yards. Who would expect it to be a lot closer than this. Nearly made up for it. That's Abe Anser at the ninth with his second. Had a glorious round on Saturday in Jeddah, a 63. Ooh, hello. <laughs> Three throughout the 96. Okay. Yes. I like sort of like four in front of it, which I mean it's just gentle slope, but four is kind of flatter, so it makes it 92. And it's definitely help. Feeling help right now. And the yeah, company. How much help it's actually going to get. Yes. You know I mean? Going up through that gap, it's not going to get up terribly high either, is it? Sergio made birdie at five. You're looking at Camp Smith, and you're listening to Camp Smith. Second shot at four. Okay. Heavy? Yep. Coming down on. Just right of it if I Perfect, mate. Love it. Let me just right of it. Yeah, when this green is. It's such a tricky second shot because you get that. Just don't miss left on this one. There's plenty of room to the right. He's certainly working on something. Another one. Looks a little stuck. It looks pretty good though. Oh, what a shot. So, Calais Samoya. Four in a row. That was at 15, having teed off at 12. What a start for the Finn. And John Rahm, this to get it to three under par at the sixth. And to start three birdies out of four, which he does. And this is live at four, Bryson DeChambeau. Just a little punch. We'll be so pleased with that one. I don't know what the cliques put in their dim sum this week, but they're eight under par already. This is Martin Keimer, their captain, for birdie at 11. That is superb. Three birdies in his opening four holes, having teed off at eight, and he's three under par. The cliques are eight under par already, and they lead Legion 13 and the Majestics by three. Don't usually see big pitch marks, but I'm seeing them today. This, this is a they're throwing darts at it today. Caleb Surratt for birdie at 17 among the maze of grain. And he reads it beautifully. <laughs> the 
Stenson at 17. At seven, I beg your pardon. Taylor Gooch putting from well off the green at three. This would be for Eagle, technically. Not at all. John Rahm, the first to tee off at seven. And this is one of those holes with the big paper parks right and left. They're a hundred feet tall. And you don't want to be in them. Although you will have a swing more than likely and a clean lie, so we'll see some recovery shots, which is always entertaining. It's a lovely shot. That'll hold the camber of the fairway. Yeah. Uh, Gooch for his birdie at three. Yeah. Green at four. Four is only 288 yards long. It's a, it's a, just a curious little hole. You can hit all kinds of things off the tee. There's a couple of bunkers down there that'll catch something that goes too straight. But you can see if you fire it over the trees, there's that slope on the left, Dom, you were talking about, that'll carry it all the way down into those woods. Yeah, and it's it's amazing how far right you, the green is. Actually, it's uh, it's very deceptive. You've got to take it over almost the middle of those right trees. It's not the play. I really don't think it's ever the play. But uh, it's been the graveyard to a few players in the past. Now Bryson's going to play for a lot of right to left break. The live line, Dom. So I'll save you here before I ask you how far it breaks left. The live line is four feet two inches right on the starting point. Started at left. Don't blink, everybody. Action across the golf course here at the Hong Kong Golf Club. Mark Leishman teed off at 14. That was his birdie effort at 17. Salutes the galleries. He's one under par. Andy Ogletree. Much improved performance from the high flyer, the man who qualified for the Live Golf League this year via victory in the International Series last year. And he's two under par already. Oh, that's an eagle for Eugenio Shikara at 13. Par 3 eighth, Henrik. Beautiful swing. Back to four in Waco. Similar putt to Bryson's. In fact, this could even break a bit more. There's a little bit more of a slope at the middle of the green, or oh, middle of his putt. Yeah. A lot of movement just below the green in his eye line. The weather is just spectacular. I mean, this is ideal conditions. Well, he didn't start it that high, and it's not moving. I've seen a lot of people shake their heads after hitting putts here. Daniel Rappaport, Neiman's got a serious chip on his shoulder this year, and from a golf perspective, I certainly do not hate it. His own revenge tour, playing some incredible golf. Well, he certainly is, and it's not just on the live uh, circuit either. No, he's been taking it out on people all over the world. 
<laughs> Cam to get it back to level par on the fourth. Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, the old South African Stinger GC squad is one of the more entertaining teams in all of Live Golf. But don't let those smiles fool you. They're here to win. To the Stingers team, we really enjoy having fun off the golf course. But once we get on the golf course, it's down to business. The Stingers motto is grin and grind. We as Africans seem to like to be the underdogs. We grind it out with a smile. Golf has always been individual, you know, and I always thought pressure was a lot more playing in a team environment. It's not always a bad thing to have more pressure. It heightens your senses, it, it heightens your concentration, and sometimes you tend to play better. And that's why you'll hear guys say that the team brings out the best of them. To be part of a team like this, it's four good friends, it's amazing. If this goes in, I'll play the next hole in my underwear. I cannot do more than that. <laughs> it's as good as it gets. You know, everybody's got each other's back, and um, when I play out there, I look at what the team is doing, and you kind of forget about yourself. Um, for some that just triggers me a little bit different, but um, it's worked for me so far. Having all four guys, honestly, that's been quite a cool thing to be a part of. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, oh yes! Getting all the same clothing and being part of a brand, that's something you don't normally get, you know? Golf can be a lonely sport, and that aspect is, is really cool. What a moment! Hopefully we can even improve on last season and see if we can win the overall this year. There's barely a more competitive sporting nation on the planet than South Africa, but mm. these guys do it with a smile. In the early stages here, and Charles Schwartzel is level par, coming off his best result in Jeddah since the opening event in Live Golf history when he won the title in London. It's really interesting hearing those guys talk about the team aspect of Live Golf. Now, without team, the team aspect, Live wouldn't, it just wouldn't be, I think, the, sure. I think, the successful product that it is because you, you would get still passion down the stretch for individual titles, but you wouldn't get that passion throughout the entire golf course for the fans to be able to watch without those guys more concerned about what's happening for the team, especially if they're out of it individually. Yeah, it really I, is something special. I, I think that's the difference. And guys that are, are out of it individually, you know, they're playing their heart out. Yeah, as opposed to mailing it in. Uh, as a, yeah, you know, and, and, you know, you shouldn't ever mail it in, but guys do. Oh, yeah. Well, they were seven clear going into round three, weren't they, in Jeddah? They were ten clear very quickly, and they were beaten. Louis Eustace said he was watching the scoreboards all the time. He said the crushers came from absolutely nowhere. And he said to shoot 20 under par, which Bryson's team did on the final day, there's not much you can do about that. So I don't think they're too disheartened by that second place. It was more the crushers winning it rather than the Stingers blowing it. This was Ram at seven. Beautiful. Bryson here on five, if I may say so. This is a magnificent par three, especially when the pin's front, not today. Can be a little more aggressive, eight iron. is arriving at the Live Golf Party. This to tie the lead with Calais Samoya, his teammate. The cliques off to a quite incredible start there. Nine under par, Barty Keimer is four under. After that birdie at 12, his fourth in his opening five holes. Up Vincent, his second shot into the par five, 13th. Yep. Oh, on a peach. It's fine. Seven iron for Waco here on the fifth. 197 yards. That just Louis. We think hangs on. Yeah, that's for Birdie. He's putting so well this season so far. Tight second. Averages 27 putts. 
Oh, you got out of it pretty quickly there. Henrik Stenson has an opportunity at the eighth to tie the lead. Majestics have had a, a fun week as well as the hard graft of practice rounds. They were at the Happy Valley racetrack the other night for the big Wednesday night meet. Not sure how many winners they had. But they've started well here. Is that going to make oh, 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 you're good. kidding? You're kidding. It just makes a hard right turn right on the edge of the the right lip. Samoya, his second shot at 16. A reminder, he's opened his first round here with four birdies. And there's an opportunity of a fifth in a row. Dustin Johnson, uphill putt for a birdie. Shouldn't move too much. Just bogeyed the sixth. He would love to have this one here, get him back on track. Get the sixth green and Phil. That's for Birdie. John for a birdie, hit a great bulb wedge. He's playing some great golf, man. He has not finished outside top eight in his first three starts. Did that actually take a roll backwards? Yeah, right. That looked like it, it, it rocked on the edge. Charles Howe the third for birdie at two. Oh, excuse me, Harold Varner the third. I got the wrong third. <laughs> <laughs> he made it for a two. And now Matt Jones, his third at 13. Oh, yeah. That's an eagle for Matt Jones to take it to three under par. Well, the other two are off the back of the green. I thought, well, it's going to be Bryson. Actually, no, it's not. It's going to be Cam. I just thought the other two might come up from off the green, but uh, Cam is definitely further away. Coming up this little ridge that cuts across the middle of the green. And once it gets on top there, it will break from the left. at eight John first to go playing 186 this is a tricky green here you have to carry that false front anything four or five yards short it's gonna roll all the way down into the rough on the right he's got seven iron when helping stay short. needs to go stay there Stay Might there. roll all the way down. Moments ago, Scott Vincent for Eagle at 13. He made his birdie, and he is three under. One back of our leaders, a pair of cliques, Kaima and Samoya. Well, Bryson with the putter here, going uphill and into the grain. 
Yeah, David, years ago, this used to be rough, thick rough too. He had no choice but to hit a wedge. This is a much easier option. The members hated it, so they got him to cut it. To the green at 16, and Kelly Samoya to do something quite spectacular and open his round here with five straight birdies. Oh, 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 so close, but he stays at four under par. The birdies and the eagles are flowing on Friday, day one in Hong Kong. Samoya made that. We we're going to be on 52 watch, Arlo. <laughs> Same play for Waco. It's the correct play. No one's going to wander. Oh, my word, that was horrible. Hey, Banzer at the 10th with his second shot. Well, can the Majestics finally get it together as a team? We've been waiting and waiting. Lee West has played a lot of golf in Asia during his storied career. That's for Birdie at 12. The Majestics currently in second place on six under par. Westy one under his round. Charles Howe the third, a 64 in that magnificent comeback victory for the Crushers last week. That was for Birdie at two. He's two under. This was Eugenio Chicada at 14 to get to three under par, one back of Samoya and Keimer. Neiman for par at five. Yeah, what happened with that first putt? Well, he just got it left early. Yeah. It was a little firm and the grain took it. Yeah, absolutely. I expected these guys to be a little deeper on the par at this stage. Positive putt there. Marty Keimer, his second shot at 13. Tied for the early lead with his teammate, Kelly Samoya. Another fabulous shot. Honor Bon Lahiri. This is second shot at number one. You can see that sloping fairway. And it's just Be right. so much different when they slope the opposite oh, way of the oh. dog leg. What a beauty. Well, here's today's poll. Who's going to be the first to four? That's four individual Live Golf titles. All of these four players, the quartet, have three in their career so far. And it looks like Brooks Kepka has a lot of backing, 47%. So scan the QR code and we'll get back to this with Christian and with Rachel in the post-round show. Club 54, the 5-4. That's with your regular five, member of four. Jerry. Hey, Banzer at 10. This was a little earlier. Lovely birdie. Louis off the back of eight for birdie, Sue Ann. Yeah, this is going to be a very quick putt from where he is. It's tricky to read these greens. You can tell from the grain, it's very shiny. In the back of the screen, he had a great six iron and just took a huge first bounce. Interesting there. That just took a dive to left coming up to the fringe and then oh, pretty straight from there. Perfect weight on it. 
Tyrrell Hatton for birdie at three. Cam Smith on the tee at six. Yeah, playing into the wind slightly off the right. Those two bunkers left and right. I'm not sure Cam can carry them. It's over 300 yards, but playing down about 25. We have our drone tracer on this in the ideal landing spot, just between those two bunkers in the distance. That is miles left. Yeah, he had trouble on this tee shot too. John Rahm, wow, he got so lucky yeah, with that did. shot that it stayed up there. It's such a steep bank. This is going to be really slow, the opposite of Louis' putt. Justin Johnson, next to go in this group. Seven iron, hit it pin high. Smart play. I remember Dom told me as we're driving around the golf course, on the eighth hole, you just want to hit it to the middle of the green. Smart play by DJ on this hole. It is going to break a fair bit. in Vegas this club was running hot it was yeah and it, it kind of well you can't really say when DJ puts well he plays well you can say that about anybody because you know his ball striking is is great most times but not always uh, but the thing is with this putter his common miss on those makeable lengths to end oh looky here oh, that's not right oh that's not right at all it is common miss is right Almost always. Samoya at 17. Well, I think if you'd have offered him four under par after his opening five holes, he'd have snapped your hand off, but he might have been a little disappointed at missing that birdie opportunity yeah. on the last hole, but it doesn't appear to have affected him. What a start yeah, for the Finn. Another really good swing. He is on autopilot right now, just quality shot after quality shot. Sergio hoisting one over the trees, miles in the air. Mm -hmm. Graham McDowell is on the 12th tee. This is familiar territory for the Northern Irishman. He's played in five Hong Kong Opens, a couple of top six finishes. And a man who's flag. coming good for smash on the final day in particular. Yeah, the flag is on a ridge that runs through this green there. It's in an awkward spot. Brendan Steele is second at 18. Here's an eagle opportunity for Martin Kyber at 13 for a two-shot lead in the early running. And that'll get uh, the German to five under par, and it'll continue a very good start for the Cleeks, who will go to ten under par. This is Cameron Tringali a few moments ago. For the High Flyers, for his birdie at 13, he's two under par. Patrick Reed, his third shot into the third hole. He teed off at 17. This is at the par five, so a birdie there for Patrick, and he too is two under par. Brooks kept a long range for birdie at number seven to get it into the red figures for the day.
John Ronald on the tee at nine. They moved the tees just a few yards forward to tighten up this tee shot. I spoke to us, one of the guys on his team last week. It's gotta be a little off the right also. He says that John spends more time, as much time, on himself as he does on his golf game and his family. He's a guy that is very intro introspective. I can't talk today, guys. <laughs> You'll be fine. But yeah, he the journals. Draw in. Beautiful shot. Can't believe I got there. Did so get there? Yeah. Scott Vinson is just off the green at 14. As I was saying before, John Rahm, he likes to journal, spends a lot of time writing, really just reflecting on himself. He's very hard on himself, and so is this guy, Louis Ustazen. Well, he's hard on John Rahm. No, he's hard on himself. Oh, right. <laughs> Could be hard on John Rahm. <laughs> that one may be right of the bunker. Yeah, not too bad there. Neiman at six. And it's a jumper lie. It really looks like this could jump on him. Got to be so careful. It came out soft. Left. Too soft. Go. Oh, no, good shot. Yeah, that is a good shot from that lie. Take any chances. We saw Sergio's beautiful second shot up and over the trees at seven. That's a birdie. Back to Bryson at six. Well, safe to say I haven't seen too many people down here. I've never been down here. Slope, if I spin it left, is it going to slope off the green? No. Shouldn't? No. And if he goes for this pin, he's got to be precise. You tug it just a couple of feet. You're in that bunker. That's not a good spot. I still say eight, ten feet right of this pin is the play. Let's try and get the distance right. Just like you described it, Don. Kali Samoya for birdie at 17. For yet another five birdies and six holes, and they've all been around this range, if not closer. Even the par that he made, the lone par, was roughly the same size. What a start for Kali Samoya. He joins his captain Martin Keimer on five under par. Cleeks at minus 11 already, Arlo. I picked <laughs> 33 for the winning score this week in the Live Golf Fantasy. That might be way off. Taylor Good pops one in over at five. That was earlier. Caleb Surratt of Legion 13, this young 19-year-old, who until very recently was at the University of Tennessee. Recruited by John Rahm, and that's why he was recruited into the Legion. He's two under par so far. Kid can play. Sergio. The speakers are working down at eight. Yes. And in numbers on this one Friday, I, I don't think the Hong Kong work ethic is a little, it's the same as uh, at home in, in the U.S. People are a little more reticent to call in sick to go watch the golf on a Friday. Weekend crowds are supposed to be fantastic here as well. OK. 
camera and leaves himself some work to do there. Uh, I've seen people put it into the bunker from there. Yeah. <laughs> I think he had that in the back of his mind. This is the green at six, and the man in form, the purple patch of his entire career so far that he'll hope to take deeper into this 2024 season. He knows, Waco Neiman, that he is in the Masters, he's in the PGA Championship and the Open Championship. But whilst we wait, this is Henrik Stenson for par at nine. Rolls that one in, and that maintains a very solid start indeed for Majestic's GC, who are tied for second on seven under. Back with Waco Neiman for birdie at six. And it was a very good shot. He had an awful lie. It looked like he could have flown the green easily. Now he's got 30, 30 feet. It's going to move from his left. Kieran Vincent, another young member of Legion 13, and he's won under par for his tournament so far. That was for birdie at 15. Another man who qualified through the promotions event in Abu Dhabi in November, Sebastian Munoz. That's for birdie at 12 for the Torque man. That's Abe answer. 11, yeah. Answer three under par, and that's the putt that got the five balls into that tie for second with the Majestics. John Rahm, from the fairway bunker on the right, tried to draw one off that tee, didn't quite move it as much as he wanted. Back to that journaling story I was telling you, you know, for a guy like him, who's such an alpha male, he just would never have thought that that would be that side of him really searches within himself. Go. Sounded like he picked that pretty clean. So, and I, I'm not sure how many, what percentage of guys you could say that about in professional golf, like spend that much time working on themselves as a human, as opposed to a golfer. Pretty impressive. DJ next. He's been working on trying to get that club a little more on plane in the back. He tends to take it too far on the inside. This is a six iron. He's trying to work it left to right. I don't see DJ doing a lot of journaling. Ooh. I don't think so, Jerry. <laughs> Bryson, just a moment ago, this is for birdie at six. is nicely placed fifth place at the moment on six under one behind the podium Caleb Saran for birdie at one that gets Legion 13 into that second place tie now Live Golf's first podcast, Fairway to Heaven, is hosted by Jerry Foltz and Sue Ann Heng. So you know it's bound to be entertaining, especially with recent guest Anoban Lahiri. Do you think that that always playing as an underdog, that you're still facing that as now a representative of Liv? It's reduced. Yeah. Jerry, if you asked me this question 18 months ago, it would be an overwhelming yes. Yeah. But it's always there. I think winning a Liv event is super hard because you just look at all the guys you got to beat. Right. Right. It's, it's not a joke. If you do win, the people who don't understand what it takes to win will yeah. think it's a joke. Yeah. And that is what is really disappointing. I like to keep my head down, focus on my golf. I'm still working as hard, if not harder than I did mm -hmm. on my game. I still want to go out and win tournaments. I want to beat these guys. I want to prove to myself that I can beat all of these guys. To answer your question, yes. Yeah. I think to some extent, it's, it's sad. And, and I, I think we all live and die with each other. There's a common bond. There's yeah, a fraternity. fraternity. I think over the next few years, that number of people who do 180s is just going to increase. Yeah. There's no question. Right? Yeah. 
Well, you can see every Fairway to Heaven episode on the Live Golf Plus app. Download the app from the App Store, just like you would Netflix or Max, for example. But unlike those, Live Golf Plus is free for most of the world, particularly where the content is concerned. What a week in Jeddah for crushers. Uh, Anavan went round in 65 on Sunday, didn't he? On a personal note, happy to have contributed to the first win of the season. He came so close, didn't he? In Adelaide, second place for Anaban, in Bedminster as well, and then in Chicago, Chicago. when his own teammate, yeah. Bryson DeChambeau, that sort of bittersweet victory for Bryson. It was Anaban who missed that putt to get into a playoff at the end, but the Crushers also won the team title there. So Anaban's come very close and he's in good form so far this season. Sergio for birdie at eight. Ian Poulter, the only man who has tasted a victory on this golf course, the Hong Kong Open champion in 2011. He's on the tier five. John Ram, birdie, opportunity on the ninth. That's a fantastic bunker shot there. Didn't try and get too cute. Just played for the middle of the screen. Par in a ninth. It's not a bad score. Considering this is playing one of the hardest holes out here. Pretty sure DJ is going to be walking in pretty quickly to get a free read. Let's uh, take you out and get you caught up with Harold Varner III, who's having a, an excellent opening day here in Hong Kong. That was for his birdie at three. Same hole, Charles Howell III. That's for his birdie as well. And he is three under par. HV3 is a four ace. Chucky three sticks plays for the Crushers. It's a better shot from Anthony. Watch all of AK shots. You can go to livegolfplus.com for any shot, any time. One of the new things brought to you. And in golf, most fans feel long overdue. Beautiful shot there by Terrell Hatton. DJ for birdie at nine. Uh, Jerry, you talk about some of the missed putts that he has. He's been working a little bit more on getting that weight on his left so that that ball starts on line, doesn't fall back. Dustin gets it back to level par here in Hong Kong. Samoya with his second shot into the last. It's not his last hole, but he has been outside of 10 feet on approach yet, has he? And he's still not. He almost <laughs> flew that into the can. Well, that's got to be a good feeling, his ball striking right now. And this guy, Henrik Stenson, has experienced that on many occasions. Just laser-like accuracy when it's on. Ram made his par at nine. The 11th green. And Brandon Grace. His little end out putting stroke of his kind of hooks the ball in. Knocks that one in. This is Scott Vincent lining one up at 15.
He teed off at nine. Birded that. He's also birded 12 and 13. And this is out at 15. Sergio Garcia, one under par so far. He teed off at two. This is his tee shot at nine. Oh, hello. Well, he's got to turn this right to left. He can't rip those bunkers. And it looks like he has pushed that from where he wanted to hit it. Who do uh, we have? Short. That's Who fine. do we have chirping in there, David? <laughs> It does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Happy. Me too, mate. Beautiful tee shot from Cam Smith with an iron on seven. You've got to pay this hole so much respect, even though it's under 400 yards. Now he's got a nine iron. Ideally, just leave it under the hole. This one's one of the more severely pitched greens. Oh, wind just picked up. Yeah. That one's just fine. Dustin Johnson has reached the tier 10. It's 271 to that first bunker on the right. Dead between them right there. Sure, this phone's on silent, please. Thank you. Well, Abe Anser had a run of six straight birdies in round two in Jeddah last week, so he's no stranger to a hot streak. And he's on another one here. He's running hot. This is his second shot into nine. Abe Anser, who teed off at six a little earlier on. He made birdie there, of course, and he followed that up immediately with birdie at 10, the par four. The streak continued at 11, also a par four. And this to make it four in a row at 12. This is the par three, and this streak for Abe Anser has helped, helped the fireballs into second place on eight under par, four behind the streaking cliques in the early stages. Price in second shot at seven. Settle. Well, this man is almost knocking the flagstick down every time he swings the club. Cali Samoya for another birdie. No. This curls away on him, that one. John Rahm, just a few seconds ago on the tier 10. Anthony Kim for birdie at 16. He parred his final 11 holes on Saturday last week in Jeddah. Level par over his final 11 on Sunday. Charles Howe the third. This is for his fourth consecutive birdie. And he's a man who's rounding into fine form early on in the 2024 Live Golf League season. He's four under par, one back of our leaders. Well, the seventh green and three good chances here. 
yeah, for these they, guys. Yeah. The other two, better than Neiman. Neiman's a good 25 feet away. And as I was saying, there's a severe pitch to this green from back to front. So they're, they're going to be, he and Cam are going to have putts that break pretty hard to the right, to the left. Whilst we wait for Waco, this is Henrik Stenson's effort for birdie at 10. That roar tells you all you need to know, and he's four under par. Majestics are second on eight under in a tie with the Fireballs. Now, this part, as a golfer, you want to picture it going in at three o'clock on the clock face. So hard in from the right. You want to die this part there, though. You don't want any speed on it as it gets to the hole. Phil checking out his second shot into the ninth. That straight left into the bushes, or the trees rather. Oh, oh. and that's a hazard. John, John Rahm. Rahm, wedge, front right hole location. You certainly want to carry that false front. Uh -huh. oh, it's pulled it a little. To the seventh and Cam Smith for birdie. Can be a little more aggressive. He's putting more uphill. Maybe picture it going in at 4, 430. <laughs> ah, the second screen experience that you described a few moments ago jerry is a smash hit around the world lynchy uh, au is that australia i guess so this is what my weekend looks like that's a, that's a quad screen situation hoping for a big week from the aussie boys ripper gc take full advantage of the live golf league any shot any time which is on livegolfplus.com i'm sure the aussie boys will have just half an eye on the Adelaide event, which is looming into view. Now, Bryson for birdie at seven. Yeah, this is the flattest part of the green. Uh, you'll see all three days the pin towards the back of the green. You just can't pin it in the middle or down the front. Too much pitch on the green. It all depends on pace here. Too hard, it won't break from the right as much. Bryce gets it rolling. The Crusher's captain is two under par on day one here in sunny Hong Kong. Winds are down, weather's idyllic. And this course is giving up a lot of good scores thus far, not even halfway through round one. Uh, uh. It was a little while ago, Leo Ustazen at the 10th, the second shot over the little drain that runs across the fairway. Well, Ian Poulter knows his way around this golf course. The 2010 Hong Kong Open winner here. Top five finishes in the two years either side of that, and he's two under par so far. He's running hard. That's his third into the third hole. He would make birdie there, and then a birdie putt at four, a par four. Rolls that one in nicely. Teed off at 17. He bogeyed 18, but he's 
back on track. This is his tee shot at five, the par three. Steps back and admires this. And he'd finish that off for a third straight birdie. Holter are two under par, the Majestic's eight under par. They're four back at the leaders, the cliques. John Ram for birdie at 10. In the hole! In the hole, John! He had it to be hit it. Got a 1031 of those is about 90. 89. Uh, it, it should be 88. It should be like 87, yeah. Yeah. It's perfect. It's got that a little bit of help. If it is hurting a little bit, it should still get up on top. Yeah, just over. Yeah. Just over if anything. I like that. And if you're going for the pin, which I don't recommend on this hole, you gotta land at least 10, 12 yards on the green. That right side will collect it and run it. 20 yards off the green, eight iron for Bryson. Wind just picked up a little bit helping. Well, it's long enough. Maybe needs to get down. Yeah, just off the back edge, it's all right. That's Here's quick. DJ at 10. It's a straight eight. Happy? Yeah. Uh, it's an eight iron, and I think that's the right club because Bryson's back edge with an eight iron. He's got to flush it though. It's long enough. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that one. He didn't seem to like it much, but. Well, the Live Golf League is always looking to improve the fan experience, both during the broadcast and on site. To see the best players in the game for yourself in 2024, just scan the QR code on the screen for tickets to future events. We'll be in Miami at Doral's Blue Monster the first week in April. Then it's on to Adelaide, as I just mentioned, in Australia. We can't wait for that. Then it's Singapore in the weeks that follow. Get your tickets now and enjoy the golf as thousands have done here in Hong Kong. Falter. His approach at six. Just hold that finish. He likes it. And he should. Looking for four straight, Ian Poulter. <laughs> this is Ian Poulter oh, in the hotel the other me. day. Oh. Well, the, the, the hotel starts on floor 103. It's no, it's to, we're told locally it's the highest hotel in the world above ground level. Yeah, it's the, the lobby's on 103. <laughs> Teammate Henrik Stenson, who started wonderfully well here on day one, four under par, his second shot into 11. Oh. That's to tie the lead. Charles Howell. This for birdie out at number five. Marty Keimer to save par at the par 4 15th. This was a moment ago. You see that he's already dropped to four on the pylon. Seventeen, Anthony Kim for birdie. Matthew Wolf, who had to withdraw after the first round, 
last week in Jeddah through sickness, but great to see Wolfie back out there again. He's one under par, his second shot into 14. David's goats are struggling in the early going, down in 12. Louis Oosthuizen on the 11th. I spoke to Dean Bremister a couple of days ago. He said, Louis is hitting the ball as good as I've ever seen him. Just working on that little takeaway, trying to get that club a bit more on plane. Yeah. The fairway cambers from right to left. Needed a little fade to hold. Bryson putting it from off the green at eight. Dumb. Yep, and it would not surprise me if this comes three up and a half. short. Yeah, it's about, it's just about half. I'd say I, I, I like that. I like 15 with the grain. Yeah. Just playing the first seven feet. Okay, so 23 feet. Okay. Oh, it's a lot more than 20 feet. feet. But it, that's what he's playing for. It's a good 35, 40 feet, the actual putt. But it is pitched. Like I said, wouldn't surprise me it comes up a bit short. It's not sure. Yeah, very good, Pat. Whilst that was happening, John Rahm on the tee at 11. He can hit that fade. That should hold this fairway. Yeah, that's perfect. I don't know what angle you guys got on this putt, but uh, this is going to break left to right hard. And there's an old hole about five, six feet short of the actual hole. If Cam can roll it over that, the middle of that, it will, be, it more than likely will go in. Needed a little more speed to hold the line. Now then, the green at six. And Ian Poulter to get to three under par with what would be a fourth consecutive birdie. on a tear here in Hong Kong. He is no stranger to victory here. He's got it to three under par. The Majestics are two back in the team competition. Kale Samoya at one. His longest birdie putt of the day thus far. Back at eight. Hello, Neiman. Abe answer a moment ago. This is an eagle putt at 13. Remember, four straight birdies so far for him, and that would be five straight. Stenson climbs the pylon as well to five under, level with Calais Samoya. He's just tapped in his birdie putt at 11. Decidedly Northern European look about that leaderboard at the top. 
Swede, a Finn, a German. So these guys will move to the ninth hole at the Hong Kong Golf Club. And let's take a look, David. Number nine, 493 yards, and it turns right around the corner here. These two bunkers on the right are in play, and then it narrows down a little. Fairway cambers from right to left, and you can run this one in. A little, uh, it's a long, Slender green, this is about a 45 degree angle to the players. Sebastian Munoz gets that to drop at 14. He's now three under and two back. Well, 54 hole events, scores like this, you just, every par feels like you're losing ground, I would imagine, right now. Louis Oosthuizen. Got him. Big first bounce off the left side of this fairway, trickled into the rough. Lies pretty good. All locations on that left side today. Did he guess the jump? No. Jumped a bit further than he wanted. Good swing, though. So the Stingers, let's get you caught up on a couple of them. Charles Schwartz will tie second with Captain Louis in Jeddah last week. He said his driving is the key to a return to four. That was his tee shot of five. He made his birdie. And Dean Burmister, who teed off at 18. This is for birdie at seven. So Dean is one under par. Stinger at the moment, having blown that big lead in the final round to the Crushers well, in Jeddah, saying, are in eighth I, I, place, I, I, five I'm under. Saying if you, here is, is 270 from here, 10 downhill is 260. Mm -hmm. And that's 10 short of the left edge of the, of the bunker. So it's either seven wood or you hit driver and it goes over this white, uh, this Y tree. The tree the driver is a dangerous play on this it. hole and he's got it out. Guys, at the Beijing Olympic Games, the equestrian event was held in Hong Kong and the cross country was yeah. held on this golf course. Oh. And there's a fence about 70 yards off this tee. But uh, just they, we left it there just to remind us of that. Now he is aiming so far left. If he pushes it slightly, there's a penalty area, both left and right. If he can clatter into those trees on the left, it will drop into the penalty area. Oh, he teed it six inches in the air. It's left. So I don't get that play. Clank. You hit trees? It's coming down right now. Just put a shot. John Rahm over at 11. Want to keep this one below the hole. A nice shot. That can. He's got the right club. Just need to aim at those two bunkers at the end of the fairway. Try and turn it over. I think with this club in this wind, you probably can't get it to those bunkers. Hugs the left edge to start off with, but it'll make it all the way over to the right edge of the fairway. That's perfect. Cali Samoya on the tee. Par three, number two. Likely just a nine iron. Another fine shot. This is incredible. Fun oh. games here on the ninth tee. Bryson also with a driver. Oh, boy. Get Get the wax out of your ears. Okay. We have a three-way tie at the top of the pylon on five under par. 
Yeah. 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 Louis, long range birdie putt on the 11th. Took a huge first bounce out of that left side rough. The 16th hole, and Paul Casey with his second shot. Oh, beauty. Wow. Please. Mark Leishman. This for birdie at three. That got him to three under par. Now, here's John Rahm to get to four and apart at 11. He's playing some textbook golf today. This golf course is all about strategy, and he is just plodding around so well. Another example right here, keeping it below the hole, giving himself an uphill putt, not too much break. Rom now one back of the trio at the top. Dustin Johnson is putting for birdie at 11. Found the left rough, similar to Louis, and took a massive first bounce. And they've shaved that left side of this fairway. So if you miss it just a little left, it's gonna kick it into the rough. Hit a beautiful lob wedge to this point. This should move to his right. Fourteenth hole and Carlos Ortiz. Oh, what a beautiful second shot. Harold Varner the third for birdie out at number six. Hmm. He's one back. Marty Keimer on the green at 16 to get it back to five under par. A great tee shot from Cam. Got it well past the bunkers, which I didn't expect him to. No. Definitely well, working on something with his backswing there. Yeah, he is. He is working on something, especially with the driver. Cut. Cut. That's not the worst miss. Let's take you to the green at 12 and Henrik Stenson for the outright lead. Won his first live golf event in our inaugural season in Bedminster. Can Calais Samoya take advantage? This for the outright lead for the Finn at the second. Oh. Now Bryson at the ninth. 
Yeah. Well, this is not quite as left as Cam's, but it's left. Robbo should be first at number 12. Yeah, Jerry, it's a, as David pointed out earlier today, great par threes on this golf course. They're not very long, but they certainly make you think pretty hard where to hit it. Today's whole location on the 12th, it's on that spine of the screen. You don't want to miss it left. It's going to be a treacherous putt. Playing just 142. Early look at our scores based on where the tee shots ended up. 11 birdies, just one bogey. Those green dots, that's a lot of putts hold. That is a lot of putts. Yeah. No option, Marco, but to punch out with his second. Took a quite an aggressive line through a narrow gap, and uh, bogey's looking like the likely outcome. Back to the tier 12 for DJ. Yeah, 41 down to 37. I like that. Just a wedge for Dustin. I want to just start this right about five, six feet right at this whole location. Wow, that was not his best. <laughs> Ian Poulter from just off the green at number seven. Back to 12 for John Rahm. See that hump in the middle of the green? The flag is right on top of it. Yeah, it's just on that spine. Just a touch of wind off the right. John's probably going to try and take this pin on with his little fade. Interested in this hole when the flag's in the back left. That's a good safe shot. Brooks Kepka. A little right for Bernie out at number 10. surveying his third shot here on the ninth. A couple of feet further left, he would have been down a slope into the rough, but uh, it hang on, hung on. Now this putt, first few feet will break slightly to his left, but the last 15, 20 will move to his right. Mark Leishman out at number four. He can just launch the ball so high at will. Nice. Back at nine. Good idea of the height of these trees. No chance our drone will get in the way this week. It's got to be about 200 feet in the air to get anything. Looks like it's going to be Marco first. Oh, no, it's Bryson. You know that, because the, the ground is softer, 
he could afford to hit driver on the tee on this hole. With the line he was on, if it's a little firm, he would have been in the penalty area and to the right of this hole. But come. Right, this will break gently from left to right the entire way. Well, it's been a great spectacle so far in the sunshine. We have nine holes to play on day one of Live Golf Hong Kong. Welcome to the Hong Kong Golf Club. Night to play on day one. That's the scene. I mean, what a picture. A fantastic, vibrant city here and a wonderful, historic golf course as well. They've been playing here since 1889. Your announced team, myself, Arlo White, Jerry Foltz, David Fairty are in the booth. Don Boulay and Suan Heng are our on-course analysts. It is a gorgeous day here. A little bit of drizzle so far this week. Uh, but pretty much perfect today in the sunshine and only 66 degrees. Well, I hope you're enjoying it so far. The entertainment has come thick and fast. Lots of birdies, lots of eagles. And at the moment, we've got a three-way tie. And Henrik Stenson is one of those players who has started exceptionally well. The Majestics have started great. And Kali Samoya and Marty Keimer and the Cliques are setting the pace in the team competition. Let's send you out onto the golf course then. And we can talk to our on-course analyst, Suan Heng. Let's start with you. Your uh, following uh, John Rahm, aren't you? And so far, and I think you said it, it's been textbook so far by the Legion 13 captain. That's right, Arlo. I think at the top of the show, I highlighted the importance of hitting it in the right spots on the green. You don't want to be pin high. You don't want to be long. You want to keep it below the hole. This is a golf course that's very much strategic. You've got to think very hard where you want to hit it. And John Ram, as you said, Arlo, is playing textbook golf. He's playing fantastically, giving himself great opportunities as he's surging up that leaderboard. No surprises here. It's been a much slower start for the group I'm following on this front nine. I thought they'd be a little bit more under par than they are. But this front nine is the trickier nine. Much slopier greens, much tighter off the tee. But the back nine does open up and the greens are certainly flatter. I'll be very surprised if they don't all shoot two or three under par on this back nine. A couple of John Rahm highlights. Just the textbook, as Sue Ann said. His second shot at number four up the hill. Yeah, and a good example of that strategy, uh, number, number four, only 288 yards long, but left himself a full wedge in there. Then at number six, John Rahm had this just kind of shortish length one, but ones that he hasn't been making in regulation much of late, Sue Ann. How much more comfortable is John Rahm looking on the putting greens? We know the ball striking is great, but on the putting greens. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell. I think, like I said before, the fact that he does give himself those very makeable putts, keeping it below the hole, giving himself uphill, not big breaking putts, it certainly shows the confidence as well in his long game, his putting, and especially his wedges, actually. It's been really sharp. Ever since I joined him, it's really impressive the way he's been striking his wedges. Um, do you think he's been tempted at all, Sue Ann, you know, with Adam Hayes there, you know, to hit driver? There's been a couple of places where, you know, you could really take advantage of it if you take a risk. Yeah, I mean, he seems to be in pretty good control and seems to be very composed and very calm out here so far. I mean, this is a ball strikers golf course, as we talked about uh, throughout our coverage today. And he's one of the best ball strikers in the game or ever lived. And uh, I think it's certainly shining through his game today. 
check in on him at number 12. This another one for birdie. Not to be there, but he's just one back with that uh, solid golf. Oh, look at, oh, look at this. that. Ah, the mayor of Hong Kong Golf Club, Dom Boulay. Uh, at least we're told that's him. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago was that? Hmm. Of course, you don't have a picture, Dom. It was uh, you with one of your trophies. Is it difficult uh -huh. for you out there, you know, knowing that this is, you know, your golf course? You've been a member here for how many years? You Forty. Know, how many? 40, 39 40 to be exact. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, you, you want to run over to these players and tell them, no, don't do that. Well, it's funny to say that Cam Smith on the last uh, on the eighth green said to me, I'm surprised you don't have a bag here. You know, <laughs> obviously, I do know the course very well. But uh, and I've noticed on the front nine with these players that they have struggled reading these putts. There are a lot of nuances, just tricky little reads because of the grain. And uh, yeah, I mean, but this back nine, like I said, it's much easier to read because simply the greens are a lot flatter. Dom, the forecast is this is going to be the best scoring day of the yeah. three. The winds are going to increase each day and Sunday getting quite blustery. How much more difficult is it going to be to manage the golf course through these trees? Uh well, it does swell, Jerry. There's certain areas like the sixth fairway. You can stand on that fairway, and within 30 seconds, it can blow in four different directions. So it'll be a, it'll make a big difference. Also, if it's a cold wind, which we're expecting it to be, it firms up this golf course. And things like what Bryson did on the ninth, hitting the driver, you can't do that. Chaps, how about Cali Samoya and the start Ooh. that he's made today, and and his captain Marty Keimer as well. I mean, what yeah. a, for a player that's so new to the Live Golf League to start in front of the big galleries here in Hong Kong as well as he have is mightily impressive. Yeah, well, we thought it might bring a different player, you know, in, into that bandwidth, and you know, you've got Marty Keimer there, who's actually the shortest hitter out here statistically, you know, looking really good. Samoya, he, he looks fantastic. I mean, he. Jerry has just about knocked the flag down with every iron shot he's he, hit. You know who he's playing like? Who? Henrik Stenson. Yes, he That's is. Exactly what yes. he's playing like. And Stenson's there at five yeah. as well. That's the kind of golf, David, that you practice for. That when, when you're having a round like Samoya is having, and, and granted, given his resume, he hasn't had a ton of those in his career. Um, in, a, in a journeyman like career who, as Arlo said, got the golden ticket through the promotions event. But when you're having a day like that, how do you not get in your own way? Yeah, really, you know, you just got to stay in the present. You know, take each shot as it comes, you know, and have a really short memory. You know, if you do hit a bad one, you know, it's easy to lose momentum when you're having a round like this. But, you know, so far, so good for him. And look at the Majestics on 10 under par. And they are long overdue. They're a veteran team, of course, as we know, with three captains in Poulter, Westwood, and Henrik Stenson. Poulter has won a, a Hong Kong Open here. He started very well. You know, it, there has to come a point where there is professional pride with these guys who have won across the world, but who finished 13th last season. They haven't challenged the podium in a while. This is about time they, they found some form, isn't it? Yeah, it, it really is. They're overdue. Yeah, and when you watch the, the Camp Confidence, that they did when they all gathered around in the offseason at Poulter's house at Lake Nona, you could see that professional pride. Mm. You could see the fact that when you don't play good as a, as a team and them individually as great champions, you, you feel, you don't feel no, so much embarrassed, but you feel a little hurt by it. You could sense that coming through in that, and they're, they're as determined as they can to prove that the clock hasn't uh, ticked too far on their careers. Yeah, well, let's send you back out onto the golf course and Brooks Kepka's second shot at 11. Martin Keimer. He rolled one in at 17 to get it to five. No. That's Charles Howell the third. Oh, just a little short. Elsewhere, Pat Perez of the four aces. This is for birdie at four. For double P, rolls that one in nicely, has a little peer down the green and watches it disappear. 
Charles Schwartzel tied second in Jeddah last week for Stinger GC. That's for Birdie at six. And he gets it to one under par. Rahm on the tee at 13. Par five. Last one he'll play today. Got the driver, one of the few drivers he'll hit. Yeah, big wide fairway slopes a little from right to left. After some of the almost claustrophobic feeling holes, yeah, David, this yeah. one feels like you can air it out a bit. Did he overdo it a little? Bunker there. Paul Casey for birdie at 17. When you look at the analytics, I love using that word analytics, makes me feel like I'm a sports nut. As we check back in on Cam a moment ago, when you look at it leading into this event, and because of the tournament history they've had here with the Hong Kong Open, you get a good idea of what it takes to play well. Yeah, final group. It's supposed to be Paul Casey and Brandon Grace and, and one other. Yeah. So we'll see if that holds true. That was Brooks for birdie at 11. And now Bryson DeChambeau with his second shot at 10. Well, picture what Cam did, but uh, playing into the win. These greens don't spin that much, but this particular green with this pin, it's dangerous. Right now, yeah. it's ranking as the hardest hole on the course. No. Yes. No way. Yes. I don't believe that. Stats don't lie, Dom. Before Bryson, it was Waco. front Ginio Jakara for birdie at one the eighth tee in Charles Schwartzel Safely say that he wasn't impressed with that. Brooks on the tier 12. He's enough Brooks. Slightly out of Bubba is third at the par 5 13th. This was just a moment ago. Long bunker shot. Just needed to catch a bit more of the flag stick. Oh, yep, it was hard underneath there. Now live at 13, Stenson to take the lead by himself. Day night, the Majestics all went to the horse races. Horse races, excuse me, at Happy Valley. Having a good old time, like Arlo said. No idea how well they did if they happened to place a wager. Samoya now at the third. 
This would give him the lead. That's what four birdie putts of very makeable length that haven't gone in, and he's five under. Yeah. See if Phil can put together a quality iron shot here. Not a good start. Has this 10 footer for Birdie at 13. Vintage Kevin Na. Matt Jones for birdie at 18 a few minutes ago, and this would get him to four under par, which is one back of our trio of leaders. Still going, still going, and in it drops. Spectacular par there for Joaquin Neiman. He'll drop one. Cameron Tringali, 18th hole, has plenty of work here for par. Bryson DeChambeau is on the green at 10, and uh, look at the crushers yet again. They are nine under par in a three-way tie for second. That's three behind the leaders, the cliques. You've got to go low to count for the crushers. Anna Bandler here at the moment, two under par, not counting. Bryson is counting on two under. Paul Casey, three under, and Charles Howell, the third, is four under. Coming off a quite remarkable oh, performance in Jeddah. Bryson for birdie, yes. And the captain of Crusher's GC, Bryson DeChambeau, is three under par, two back of our leaders. <laughs> now camp for birdie. is two under and Ripper the Aussies nine under par and a tie for third this is Brooks for birdie at 12 not quite smashes day so far down in 13th and last place on just one under par for birdie out of 12. Phil 
Hamilton teed off at two, but the damage has been done at the ninth with a double bogey six, and he followed that with bogey at the tenth. Martin Keimer. Second shot into 18. Oh, and another good one. Anna Ban Lahiri for birdie at six. That helped the crushers to 10 under par. Two great birdies, there's always a great atmosphere around this 10th green. The 18th tee is just 30 yards away, the 6th green is not far away, and the 7th tee and this 11th tee. Now, it's the, pretty much one of the widest holes on the golf course, but I've seen people in trouble here. Yeah, it's deep jungle down the left here. Yeah, and if you're turning the ball over, it kicks on a downslope into those trees. Oh, this is looking really good. Right up the right edge of the fairway. Should kick left. Oh, it stayed in the rough, I think. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's one of those coming down right center. A little wind off our right. He's, he's playing he's aggressively. The, the driver, yeah. Yeah, I did, didn't think he'd be hitting this many drivers on this golf course, but good to see. That's what the crowd came out to see. And he's going to go over those big gum trees on the right, hit it with a slight draw, and uh, he could get this within 60 yards of the green. It's a 466-yard hole. Aye, there you go. Oh, that's going to be right up the middle. If it has a big bounce. Yeah, it takes a huge bounce and runs about 50 or 60 yards. Well, last Sunday in Jeddah certainly looked like a Stinger's team victory, but that was before Bryson DeChambeau and his crushers mounted the league's most impressive come-from-behind victory. Stinger GC have been competitive from the word go, and it's been plain sailing so far in Saudi Arabia. We were so far behind the Stingers, they were playing great golf. Absolutely magnificent from Dean. And he looked up there and I think all four of the Stingers were in the top ten. They appear unstoppable. So no, no thoughts about winning last week, not at all. Stingers have extended their overnight lead of seven to a commanding nine over Legion 13. I don't want to say we were out of it, but we were so far behind as a team, I think we played maybe a little bit more free. The Crushers tie for third place now. We are like, oh, wow, we're actually catching up, and we just kept playing good. The Crushers are 28 under. Legion 13 are 28 under. OK, then, this is happening. It's 12 under par today. Sting of the leaders by five. And then when I looked up the next time, I saw Bryson's up at six or seven. I'm like, oh, here he goes again. The gap is now one. And I was just thinking, just don't leave it short. Don't leave it short. And then I hit him, I'm like, I left it short. I left it short. The Crushers have come from absolutely nowhere to lead Stinger by a shot. This is quite stunning. And at that point, suddenly it got real, and everybody in my group kind of going, oh, you know, they can see. They know what's going on. I mean, we could have given up. This is something of a collapse by Louis Oosthuizen. The Crushers are disappearing over the hill. One of the all-time great team performances on Championship Sunday. Hey, <laughs> we have something in the crushes that you can't measure. I guess come back. We were 11 shots back. Yeah. Yeah. We have a bond. We have a little gang. We have something that I think the other teams look at and they're trying to figure out what we've got and they wish they had it. Yep, the band of brothers. Bryson, 62. 64 for Charles Howe. Anna Van Lahiri, 65. Paul Casey, 69. Whilst we were watching that, third shot at 13. The par five for John Rahm. That's well played. He's in an awkward spot there. And now live for birdie. He wasn't very pleased with himself after that pitch. Part of his game that let him down a little on the final day in Jetta. Bogeyed that tenth hole after driving it just front right of that green. And then again later on. 
Have to make birdies here in the par fives. The par will feel like a bogey. And Poulter through the tall trees at nine. That's a fine shot. Eugenio Chicada for birdie at two. Plays for Sergio Garcia's fireballs. He's getting himself into contention here. He's four under par through his opening 11 holes, and the fireballs are 10 under. That's level with the crushers in second place. Samoya up the hill at number four. Come on. Thank you, Sam. Henrik Stenson, second shot at 14. It's a good tee shot there. Another one in there close. Uh, can a little unlucky that ball didn't kick left. The wind is all over the place. Downwind a moment ago, now back into the wind, which is what it should be. Start of the day, it's supposed to be from the northeast. Just doesn't have the control. Even though there's hardly any rough. Uh, go, go. Oh, he controlled that pretty nicely. I'll say. Munoz at 17. Oh, lovely little kick. Patrick Reed has had to punch out at number nine. This is his third shot. Wow. He'll have a great chance of making par. Marty Keimer for birdie at 18. Adrian Marat for birdie at 10. Oh, yeah. Well, his teammate is Calais Samoya. This for birdie at four. Quick one. Get a good putt. John Rahm on the tee at 14. Winds down. A little off the right. Probably want to aim this just the left center of this fairway. Play his fade. A few moments ago, Dom watching Bryson at 11. 55 yards from the front edge of the green. What? Yep, 55. It'll be first to putt. <laughs> yes, he will. And Poulter off a fine second shot at the ninth. Oh, and that's a great birdie at the typical ninth. Great opening day so far for Ian Poulter. Not a bad one for Kieran Vincent either of Legion 13. Two under par after that birdie at the second. And David Pouge, who has uh, consecutive top 15 finishes, the man who 
was picked up by a free agent from Torque by Sergio Garcia's fireballs. That was his third and three. And David Puj gets it back to level par where the fireballs are 10 under and in a tie for second. Well, he didn't walk it in, but it was a great effort from Kevin Nah. Indeed, Bryson is first to put at 11. Three birdie opportunities Just here. One. Yeah. Yeah. Guess if I was going to be on one of them, I'd say edge, but I'm kind of right there with you. I tell you guys, through no good knowledge, these two greens, 11 and 12, are the two toughest greens to read because they're the only two greens that are uh, Tiff Eagle on this golf course. Ah. Yeah, all the rest are Bermuda 327, the oldest type of Bermuda. I think it's 327. Yeah, it is. It's very grainy. I noticed walking out there this morning. Struck confidently knocked in there. Henrik Stenson, meanwhile, has this for the outright lead on 14. Now, don't forget about our form check feature. Send in your swings and they will be torn to pieces on the post game show. By some, not by all. Well, you, you're good cop in that situation, some, Jerry. Some office action right there. Yeah. He's oh. got the pose at the end there, Andre. I was giving you a little lesson earlier, Arlo. You were, you yeah, were, yeah. Left arm straight. Uh huh. Left shoulder over the right. He over the right foot. Five swings, and I was exhausted. Yeah, yeah, but you're gonna hit it a lot farther now. Cam Smith for birdie. Same putt, just a couple of feet shorter. Bryson's went in on the left edge, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Well, here's some more stinger highlights for you coming off the disappointment of that second place finish, if that is possible, in Jeddah. That was Louis Oosthuizen's third shot into 13, where he made birdie. Brandon Grace has started really well today. This for birdie at 15. Stinger down in seventh place at the moment on seven under par. That's only three off the podium. Now back to Neiman. Just shapes this ball so beautifully. Joachim Neiman on that tee shot. Just hit a low screamer with a cut. Wonderful second and an easy birdie. Three birdies, these guys, this back nine, it's there for the taking. Answer now. At 16, and this would give him the outright lead. We have stalled at five under for the individual lead. Nice one out of Baba at 14 to get to two under par just a moment ago. Now Dustin Johnson. He got really lucky not to be right behind that tree that's in front of him. No tree trouble to this elevated green. Calais Samoya is on the tier five. The clique still leading the way, only by a shot over the crushers. Samoya teed off at 12, but in his opening four and five of his opening six. Mm, that's one of the first loose swings we've seen from him. John Rahm coming out of the fairway on 14. Huge advantage in terms of controlling the ball. Just a lob wedge. A 
I think he's enjoying it out there. You like that one. He'll let you know. <laughs> he will let you know. He uh, he's such a gentle giant off the golf course. On the golf course, he's intense. Cam, on the other hand, he'll get, he'll be down on himself, but he's super cool now. Yeah. Moments ago, the pin was blowing downwind, the flag, but I threw up grass and it was into us. So a little confusing here. Past the pins, a play much easier putt than if you're right or left. Uh, right edge sit, of the green. Sit. Yeah, that's the safe miss. Cam has birdied three of his last five, but Live Golf continues to provide the most outstanding viewer experience in golf. Last week, we unveiled the first iteration of our groundbreaking Any Shot, Any Time initiative. It's available on the web at livegolfplus.com. Every group on the golf course will be covered live with AI-informed graphics. You can choose to see every shot of your favorite player or switch from group to group for an amazing second screen experience. Later this year, we'll expand the feature to include the Live Golf Plus app on all devices. There will also be team viewing with four, a four box and any shot callback featuring replays with a click of a button. How about that? On all devices? Every device. Like your toaster? <laughs> On your fridge freezer? Right. Yep. Gotcha. If it's a smart toaster. Mm. Thomas Peters, second shot at six. This is just a moment ago. Range goes lagging behind, down in 11th place. And this oh. drops. Oh. A timely boost for the Goats. Louis Oosthuizen got a little lucky with the second shot, took a really big first bounce. Now this one. A shot that you don't see very often. Yeah. Just using his three wood. Little nudge with it. Yeah. Just get it over the rough stuff in front of him. Oh boy. And it kicked up in the air on him. That was uphill and into the grain. Just found himself in a tough spot. Hemrick Stenson on the 15th fairway. He teed off at four. I mean, that's 70 all day, right? Okay, I'd like, I'd prefer the 70, I've got to be honest. Yeah. No, we, if it were 20 foot past, we wouldn't mind. Yeah. Okay. Kind of dragged that one away. Oh boy. This is Kelly Samoya, his second at par three, number five. That is such a difficult shot from down there. Moments ago, Brooks for Eagle at 14. Correction, back one, 30. Dustin Johnson. Yeah, Dustin Johnson for uphill, very slow putt for Birdie. He's been taking quite a bit of time on this putt. He's trying to figure out how much break to take. To move to his left. Oh man, just a few inches too firm. That would have taken the break. Brandon Grace just a few moments ago. His second shot at 16. Oh. <laughs> 
So it is highly likely that Brandon will get it to four under par one back of our trio of leaders. Cam to get it to four under. Brooks made his birdie at 13. Well, he's just up against the collar of the longer grass there, which now actually from the angle he's going at it shouldn't be a problem. Well, three pretty poor shots considering such a short hole, but uh, I think the wind's starting to fall with them. It is all over the place and picking up. Little hobble initially, but plenty of speed still. Samoya for par at five. Good effort. First drop shot of the day for Finland's Kale Samoya. Marty Keimer, here's captain for the cliques to get to five under par. Teed off at eight earlier, birdied five of his first six. Oh. Green. Yeah, similar line for Neiman, aiming out to the right. It's not going to break that much, is it? No. John Rahm on 14 to tie the lead. in his eye. Tied third in Mayakoba. He was eighth in Vegas. He was fifth in Jeddah, seeking a first victory. This is Kieran Vincent, who plays for his Legion 13, and that's for birdie at three. So Kieran having a, a good opening day here in Hong Kong. Uh, 12, Bryson is the easiest of the three putts for sure. Yeah, for three in a row. And the next one's a par five. If this goes in, he could make eagle. He could be on a real run. Oh, he's off after it. Oh. A foot and a half short. What was that? Abraham answer. He's out at number 17 playing his second. 41 yards remaining. Ooh, just misses the flagstick. From the fairway with the nine iron or a wedge, that was unexpected to release that much. Eugenio Takada, remember back to. 2022 when he won in Bangkok well he's got it to five under par after that birdie at three and the fireballs are leading the way now 12 under par huge reward at 15 for hitting the fairway more than a, a shot over missing it either right or left thus far Torque not quite making an impact so far this season they won four events in the team competition in 2023, that's Mito Pereira for birdie at seven. Dean Burmester, two under par. This birdie put at 11 for the Stinger Man. John Rahm on the 15th. Yes, I agree. It's just Split the fairway I should the three wood, you know. Five. Yeah, that's the right one there. It's 277. To reach yeah, the hazard. Perfect line. Yes, sir. This fairway. I don't think any players will be going with the driver today, especially with the wind into and from the right. Five wood.
John Rahm looks dialed in here in Hong Kong. It's a four-way tie on five under par, and he is one of them. DJ's turn next. Yep, similar play, just a very wood, laying it up. Quick tee pickup. Always a good sign. To save par 15, Hendrik Stenson. Well done. Dean Burmester off the tee at 12, the par three. I want to see someone headed close here. Thank you. That's better. And at the par three is the second, and here's Paul Casey. Three under par, counting at the moment for the Crushers in a tie for second place. Paul teed off at eight. I like the yardage from the hitter. Mm. Very nice. Harold Varner. Short approach at 10. Abraham answer on 17 for birdie. It's like three or four green changes there. Next to the 10th, Charles Howell III. He's four under par for his round so far through his opening 12 holes. Brooks Kepka to the elevated 14th green. Uh, we saw Louis Oosthuizen just a few moments ago from a, well, not a, such a similar spot, but left of that green. Mark Leishman, Bipper GC, his tee shot at the par three, number eight. Not bad. Small green, center of the green, never a bad target. Louis, first to play on 15th. When I got to spend some time with him during hang time, I don't think I've laughed any harder <laughs> in any other hang time than I did with Louis this week. So entertaining. Talked a lot about his love for tractors. I was going to say, he's actually got a few tractors. Oh, he's got, yeah. a, he's got three in Orlando. Yeah, I've driven one of them. That'd be really. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and That'd... he's got more in South Africa. When he won the Open in 2010, he bought himself a tractor as a gift to himself. Apparently a really sweet one from John Deere. I think that's what you do when you win the Open. Brian Harmon did the exact same thing after winning last year. And I think after he won a Pro-Am, he got him, he traded a car in for an excavator. <laughs> oh, this is a good looking shot from Louis. Louis lives in the beautiful part of Florida, Ocala, horse country as it's known. 
And his daughters are into horse riding. So it's not really for him, but supports them. <laughs> now DJ. Wow, that was another miss hit from him. Well, the early pace setters, Kale Samoya and Martin Keimer, were both five under through their opening six holes, and they're both one over for their next six holes. I spoke to Adam Hayes, John Rahm's caddy, as we're walking off the 14. I said, did he work on anything after last week? He said, oh, yeah, he worked on his wedges from 40 yards to about 120 yards sharpening that area of his game. Well, Live Golf League players competed all over the world this off-season, picking up important wins across the globe. When was the last time you had one appointment? A few weeks ago. <laughs> Let's call it a month. I won the Daniel Championship in Epic Creek and the Mauritian Open at La Reserve Golf Links. I had a few more tournaments than I thought, but it was good off season. I mean, obviously, my goal was to get into the into the Open. I, being outside the world ranking, I knew Australia was giving a spot for, for the Open. Really going to make their presence felt this weekend. You know, I played practice around with Shaw before the Joburg Open, and obviously, you know, won that event, and then the next week, you know, one again. <laughs> Being able to get a gold medal in Chile for the Pan American Games, playing against some of my great buddies like Nima and Munoz and Mito, Carlos was there, as my, my, my teammate. It was really cool. This is a world-class display of talent and poise. I was a little bit lucky to win two in a row, but it was super fun. And then, you know, Louis flew all the way from America to come and make sure I didn't win three in a row. Being in that position in Australia and then there winning, it was a great way to end the year. Carlos Ortiz, who was victorious a couple of weeks ago on the International Series in Oman, the first of the year. And his decent form continues. He gets it to three under par, two back of our leaders. Harold Varner III has climbed the pylon as well. He now plays for the four aces after an off-season trade. He's five under par. That was birdie at 10 for HV3. Kelly Samoya in the rough, out at six. Yeah, a little out of position. Well, that's turning. On oh, purpose. An excellent shot. Eugenio Chikara. This would give him the lead. This is a the fourth fireballs in a tie for first place with the ever present the omnipresent crushers gc marty keimer for birdie at two green at 15th this is dj after a less than ideal second shot for him. So up hill, it's gonna be very slow. Pretty good. Anthony Kemp for birdie at four. Once again, as we saw in Jeddah last yeah. week, rolls that one in beautifully. A rough start, but then a good recovery. Four straight rounds, same MO, yes. Paul Casey for birdie at number two. Little slippery right in the, well, not the middle, but in the bottom. <laughs> Casey's one off the lead. Anna Banner here is three under par for the Crushers, but his score is not counting, only three. Scores count on days one and two. Casey Howell, the third, and DeChambeau, all four under par. John Rahm, 
This is a left to right putt. It's tied 21st in putting stats so far this season. And Poulter going at the 11th green. get the Majestics to within one of the podium and Ian Poulter all smiles and one of the three Majestics captains is Henrik Stenson he's playing 16 this is his second shot mm. long and right that's unusual See it short. Drawing to looking at. Yeah. Yeah. So two of seven. Yeah. I like the one you got. It's into the wind, though. Yeah, I just feel like, I mean, you're going to draw slash hook this, right? Yeah. That's the only question is, is this going to go too far? 226 yeah, I mean, yards. Just think through this for one second. So 215, we're trying to land it 207, 208. Yeah. And that's playing. You'd rather just hood a seven? Yep. Oh, our, Bryson, our seven's big. two two fifteen here. So if you're turning it down, we got two twenty five out of it, it's wouldn't you? Twenty and then into the wind. It's perfect. Yeah. It's only ninety front. And yeah. To cover that bunker is like ninety eight. So exactly. don't even free swing that one. These take are numbers. Off the left a little bit. With take. which I am not familiar. <laughs> yeah. Well, he wouldn't have had a shot because uh, he had TIO relief. He would have had no shot to the green, blocked out by the trees, but now he's moved to go a good eight, nine yards to the right, and he can get to the green. Still got to turn it over. Whoa. Whoa. I don't think he was all that thrilled with the contact, was he? No, oh, not bad at all. Whilst that was happening, Louis for birdie at 15 to get to within one of the leaders this is going to be some weekend in hong kong now cam at 13. But, uh, he was in the bunker no chance of getting to the green now th these guys have been unlucky starting today this would have been the downwind hole now it's into them and uh, pretty strong too makes the last few holes a lot more difficult this wind direction John Rahm in a tie for the lead. Henrik Stenson's there as well. Cam Smith is just two back. Hudson Swafford for birdie at six. Eight events, didn't he, in our inaugural season 2022, and suffered an injury and missed virtually the whole of last season. In fact, he missed the whole of last season. He was a late scratch for our opening event. Eugenio Chicara teeing off at five. Hmm. That is not in good shape there. Well, Live Golf Fantasy is back with an exciting format that offers multiple ways to win. Pick your team and compete against friends, foes, and family from around the world. Watch your team climb the pylon and win great prizes, and more importantly, bragging rights. It's fantasy but louder, and it's another great way to enjoy the Live Golf League. This is a stunning city, isn't it, Hong Kong? Population of some seven and a half million the impulse up of the majestics rolls that one in that was for par henry extension that's his third shot at 16. very nice
Abe answer his second shot at 18. Let's take a look at the 16th hole, David, at the Hong Kong Golf Club. 411 yards, and again, it's one of these holes where the fairway just slopes from right to left, but the hole goes the other way. So you want to hit a fade into this fairway to try to hold it. We've seen a couple of guys catch the rough on the right trying to do that. Lou will be first. Hey, David, a bit of a blind tee shot. Yeah, it kind, of, it kind of goes up and over a rise. Yeah, the line here would be the tallest building this to the right. Got to almost start this on the right tree line. Yeah. Yeah. Bryson for an eagle here on 13 would never have had this chance if it wasn't for that TIO relief. Lovely lag putt. Back to the tee at 16 and John Rahm. And incidentally, I know it's early, but the top eight teams are separated by three strokes. The top 23 players separated by just two. It's that hard low fade. Up on the green for birdie cam. Yeah, pretty average third shot from about 90 yards. Yeah. Before cam, it was Neiman for Eagle. Charles Howell. Short iron in, number 11, four under, one back. One of the 23 players, Arlo was saying. <laughs> well, it's it's going to be a cavalry charge of a weekend. Yes. It, it's, it's a little surprising when we saw a couple of players, Keimer and Smulia, get the five under after, what, six holes. Six holes. That nobody has gotten past that yet. But that. Uh, you you got to think it's going to change with six holes remaining. This for Henrik on 16 to stay at five under and a tie for the lead. Bryson did make birdie back at 13. <laughs> Solidly done by Henrik Stenson. Tough second shot here for Eugenio Takada at the fifth. Oh, it just skipped on him. Still managed by skipping, by not knocking it into the slope. Actually, the spin could take effect. Well, this is the 14th hole. 14, 395 yards. And it kind of narrows in here in the driving area. A little dog leg to the left and then the green elevated and it falls off on all sides. I tell you guys, if Bryson decides to hit driver, he could hit this green with this win. No, he hasn't got the driver. Cameron Tringale for Eagle at three. And he would tap that in for birdie, and he is four under par. I'm almost a bit disappointed he yeah. hasn't pulled out the driver. Yeah, boring. Uh, this is the right play. Oh, someone shouted four left. Beautiful hole. You gotta turn it right to left.
Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I thought he was a long driver. <laughs> That's probably his five wood, which is only 12 degrees. Five wood. Well, his wedge is only 12 degrees, too. <laughs> Abraham answer for birdie at 18. 18 off at six. And he has helped the five balls currently into second place on 12 under par. The fairway at 16. Louis Oosthuizen is the first to play. I know it's only day one, Arlo, but uh, judging by what Brendan Gray said to me this morning in our interview, Definitely don't have any room to step on the brakes, especially with the team format with four scores counting on Sunday. I want to keep going, I want to keep making birdies, get ahead as much as you can. He's been playing some beautiful golf in the last few months, Louis. Two wins in the off season, second in Oman. Played well in Jeddah last week as well. This is a pitching wedge. Okay. Nicely done right there. Jakara to save par at five after that wayward tee shot at the par three. John but Rahm with a second shot. This is the area of his game. Adam Hayes told me he spent a bit more time between Jeddah and Hong Kong. He worked on this area of his game. Well, it's a decent birdie opportunity for John Rahm to hit the front here in sunny Hong Kong. DJ next. I don't, I don't mind that one. Go ahead and hit it. Good commit swing. Come on. He has hit a couple of wayward iron shots, just not hitting it as solid as we're used to seeing him. This is just a sandwich. It's looking pretty good. The four aces have been the dominant team. So far, they were a, a dynasty in 2022, won the team championship. They won the regular season title last season, but the Crushers usurped them in Miami. Is it fair to say now that the Crushers are the preeminent team in live golf and the four aces have slipped down the pecking order? You know, we saw a bunch of off-season moves that strengthened a few teams. And then, of course, John Rahm adds a new team and goes out and wins the first event. You wouldn't think the Crushers who didn't add any new members have the same team would be the team to beat but they're they're proven to be that they really are John Rahm the Charles Howell the third excuse me for birdie at 11 for a tie of the lead how many have we got tied now at five under those two are confused often are uh, <laughs> Rahm and Howell one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players tied at five under par. And another nine Straight on four down. under. Um, I mean, yeah. Uh, I thought maybe even just less than that, but yeah, right around that number. Um, I, I, Pretty much got it straight down. Walco Neiman, second shot into 14. The winner of two of our opening three events of this 2024 Live Golf League season. In Mexico to open the season after that four-hole playoff in virtual darkness over Sergio Garcia and then by four strokes convincingly last weekend in Jeddah. Flag high right, never bad.
Kelly Samoya. Long, long range for birdie at seven. The game was so easy to him the first nine. Now it's normal golf again. Uh, yes. yes, perfect. Heavy? Right to man. Uh, big break for Cam Smith here well, on 14. Here, Thank you. One yard nice to his right, it would have been a chip out. But he's got a clear shot to the green. There is a gum tree towards him in the pin. So aim it for Neiman's ball, even though he can't see it. He's got to aim it 15 feet right. Unless he tries to get over that gum tree. Now it looks like he's aiming slightly right. Very hard pan lie. Good line. Dean Burmester of Singstinger GC, the South Africans. He has joined the party on five under par. This is for Eagle at 13. Burmester, five under par. Back to Bryson. We have an eight way tie. Oh, go. Well, it nearly went. A 63 and a 62 last week for Bryson. Unfortunately, the meeting that sandwich was a 73 in round two, which meant that he didn't challenge for the title. Is Ian Poulter for birdie at 12? Back to 16 and John Rahm for the lead. Burmester four under for his last three holes. Kind of a hot flash. Well, John, as I mentioned before, he's been putting himself in really good positions on the greens, leaving himself below the hole. Uphill putts, very makeable. It's not going to move very much, if anything, just inside right. At the moment, 15% of the field are tied for the lead. <laughs> <laughs> and that remains the case. Eric Stenson is one of those eight players on five under par. His second shot into 17. Matt Jones off the green. This for birdie, number four. And that would have tied him for the lead as well. Louis. On the 16th, this is for Birdie. And he's going about his own game. Plays very differently to DJ and John Rahm, as he's mentioned in hang time today. It's not one that has a lot of swing speed. He's playing really well. Now this is a left to right putt. And then there were nine on five under. <laughs> what percentage putt. is that? Tough putt to read this for Cam. He starts this outside the right. Too much, it won't come back. Oh. Hands up if you're not five under par here at the uh, Hong Kong Golf Club. This is Sebastian Munoz. He's one of the many on five under. So is Paul Casey. This was at three. Eleven of them now, five under par. That's roughly one in five by my calculation. Yes, you are so quick. Yeah. Thank you. That is 20.3% of the field. <laughs> you do love your analytics, don't you? But it's actually 20.4 when you round up. And a cell phone. <laughs> Can Bryson break the log jam? Oh, 
Oh, he got a good read. Same line as Cam's. Starting point on the live line is 11 inches right of the hole. I know that looks like more than what you'll actually see here. But that's just the original starting point. Mm. Well, if you start it there, he's going to miss it right. Well, he started it right on it. Really? And that missed low. You fired, Dom. Yeah, you only want to yep. hit this drive. I deserve no more to be. than 260. Well, golf fans all over the world are downloading the Live Golf Plus app. And for very good reason, you can enjoy all the content the league has to offer. You can watch live and commercial free in selected markets. You can also rewatch every single round of Live Golf since day one, all 75 of them before today, as well as uh, feature content, including Live Lessons, Hang Time, and What the Fair Tea. On Saturday, you can also watch Live Golf on the CW in the United States on delay from 12.30 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. John Rahm on the tee at 17. Just a four iron. Wind off the left. There's that little stream that runs across this fairway. They've got to decide. Yeah, it's about 270 to get there, David. Yeah. We might see Bryson at some point take a swipe at this one. You never know. Well, if I started reading the leaderboard and those top of the pylon, I might have finished by the time you get back from this commercial break. <laughs> Waco for a much needed birdie at 14. This lacks for a little speed. Matt Jones, don't blink. Yeah, he goes quick. And very nice. Somebody get the outright lead. Harold Varner, maybe. Nope. Stenson took relief from the sprinkler heads. Now this putting through about six, seven feet of fringe would break the log jam at the top. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Bryson's on the tee at 15. Well. If it wasn't into the wind, he'd be going over the penalty area, the stream that runs obliquely across this fairway. Not a choice right now. Bryson DeChambeau on the tee at 15. Three of the 11 players on five under par are crushers. And they are 15 under. They lead by three. I could have done that math. <laughs> oh, my God. I got smoked. Elsewhere across this magnificent golf course, Lucas Herbert, well, tied for 22nd in Jeddah, but an opening round 65, a second round 66 for him. Showed some excellent form. That was for birdie at nine. This is Graham McDowell, who's got it back to one under par for birdie at two for GMAC. Charles Howell, the third for birdie at 12. We've seen this putt so many times. Bryson is a long way back from the green. Neiman with a hybrid trying to sling it. That's, well, you know what? That needs to sit down perhaps. Land softly. No, that's fine. A band surfer birdie at one for the outright lead. He nearly did. Now that Hemrick, who left it pretty short, is now stalking a par putt to stay as one of the magnificent 11. All on five under par.
Meanwhile, Cam at 15. One of the one of the few players who's not tied for the lead yet. Stenson for par then. Well done. After that horrible first putt. Brooks with his second shot in to 16. Nice. Hudson Swafford. Not having his best day. John Rahm having a look at what he has left at 17. I think DJ is going to go ahead and go first. Pitching wedge. This is a, probably the best angle out of all the three in this group to go for this whole location today on the right side of the screen. Well, remember, Kali Samoya and uh, Marty Keimer raced out to five under par after their first six holes, and nobody has been six under. Subsequently, this is uh, Samoya with a par putt. Yeah. Ooh, he drops back to two. Agonizing. Under. John Rahm, second shot here on the 17th. He's got nine iron. He's going to try and flight one in there. Dean Burmester, his second shot at 14. Sting up, starting very well indeed, as they did in Jeddah last weekend. Tied for second on 12 under, and that's excellent from Dean. And he could be the first man to six under par today. Now his captain, Lou Stazen. It's a good golf course for the Stinger boys. Certainly one of the most consistent teams out here. All really good iron players. And this guy been playing and striking his ball really well. This is just fading right. Oh, Bryson from well, quite a long way back. He's got 208 yards left here. And it's 15. into the wind, David, and he's got seven iron. Good Lord. He's got to crush this. He kind of has that ability. Uh, yeah. Yes, he does. Yeah. He's oh, just what a shot. Broken several laws of physics. Should have hit the eight. Matt Jones is five under par. <laughs> this is for Birdie at five. Make it a dozen. Twelve players yeah, no, I, tied for the lead. I don't think we've seen anything like, like this. See where like, or beard like on day one yeah. um, in the Live Golf League. Close trunks. We're looking like right edge of that. And we get it, we get something on five on the front there. You're gonna have 15, 20 foot straight uphill. Heavy? Yes, I do. Good low one on that line. Yep. yep. Should be mostly uh, mostly in, barely out of the right. Let's go, Brian. To, in this wind, it requires solid contact. Anything that balloons slightly or doesn't not hit quite right from the sweet spots, it will hang in the wind.
eight iron. <laughs> oh, very low. <laughs> His follow through was very low. Just a, a complete miss hit there. He had it online. Yeah. Fourth green. And the Englishman, Paul Casey, this would give him the lead by himself. Two percent of the field remain tied for the lead. Now Until then. now, yes, it's going to happen. Surely, Dean Burmester. This is at fourteen for birdie. And yes. he's top of the tree, six under par. John Rump has to join Dean at the top. It was a really cute moment. It was a toddler, probably no more than three years old. She's a huge fan of John. Had a poster of him. I was shouting out his name, and he gave her a little smile. <laughs> <laughs> As Jerry calls him, he's the gentle giant. Such a nice guy. Very passionate about his game. Such a kind soul. This is an uphill putt. Oh, and like then there were two. It's like London buses waiting for players to get to six under par. Yeah. Let's take another look. finished in the top 10 in all three of his league live golf league appearances so far and John Rahm is tied with Dean Burmester on six under hey banter on the tier two times as we've seen Cam Smith chip in over the last couple of years 25 yeah. 30 times and this is very makeable oh that's got to sit down oh. Brooks for birdie at 60 Brooks has just been bumbling along it seems like he hasn't been doing anything special he's right there yeah Louis for birdie at 17 this is a few moments ago to get it to six under par and then there were three <laughs> Burmester who stays at a pair of stingers and John Rahm all six under par Brooks at 17 laying up with an iron Susan Johnson, this for a birdie. He would love to have one. Yeah, he really needs one. Right to left. Oh. Neiman out of uh, number 15. Yeah, his second shot just went right through the wind, got it to the back edge of the green. This putt, 
down grain and it is downhill but ever so slightly the entire way. Deceptively quick. It's I'm not surprised scoring is not as great as we expected guys. It, the wind is playing havoc with these guys. On the par three fifth, Paul Casey. Nicely balanced there. Right at the flag stick. Henrik Stenson playing at second at eighteen. the green at two Abraham answer to make it a four way tie on six under par. And if you look at the team contest as well, look who it is Crusher and Stinger 15 under par. They went head to head in Jeddah at the weekend. Now the live golf plus app is filled with great content, including an incredible and informative series of lessons from the best players in the world. Hey guys, this is Cam Smith. Hi, I'm Bryson DeChambeau. I'm Bubba Watson. And welcome, welcome, welcome to my live lesson. So if you're like me and you miss fairways, this is when the creativity comes out. I focus on that target. That's what I'm focused on. Hey, the man. For me, I just want to make it simple as possible. Tempo for sure is one thing you need to keep an eye on. Cam Smith, he has taken complete control here. I like to aim the putter, make sure that's perfect. Then I take my stance, give it one good look at the hole, and hit a good putt. Houdini with the flat stick. Here you go, ball. Here we go. Bryson DeChambeau electrifies the crowd. So guys, there's a lot of mysteries around hitting it really far. That's what psycho mode comes in. Try to get a little psycho with it. Yeah, there it is. That was pepper. Let your body free up. Let things just move more. Don't feel like you're restricted. Can you do that? You're on your way to better golf. And here's Bryson for birdie at 15. On the tee at 18th, this is Louis, first to go. It's an intimidating tee shot, this one. Yeah, there's a couple of steps down towards the water hazard that's in front of this green. It flattens out in a couple of areas. Players have been laying it up at the very top of them. And I suspect these guys would probably be doing the same. Get themselves a flat lie into the screen. A little clap change. There is a little gust of breeze <laughs> into and from the right. Certainly don't want to miss this left. It is absolutely dead left. It was so solid off the tee in Jeddah last week. Hardly missed any fairways. Get at the back of the ball. I'm not sure what his follow through is going to look like. Wow. John with the big boy. 
saw him in the uh, pro-am yesterday. He was all the way down next to the water. Oh, this just shows confidence he's got. He's gonna start this. Just the left tree line. Maybe play that low fade. Yep. Oh boy. Ah! Dead straight, bullet dead left. Another one at him. So it goes straight down. I don't know if it goes straight down, it just releases out into the movie. Let's take a look at a, a couple of highlights here of the three players who are tied on six under par for the time being at least. John Rahm, captain of Legion 13, for birdie at 17. Making his mark today, Dean Burmester for Eagle at 13. Stinger coming off that disappointing second place in Jeddah. Uh, last week, but Louis Eustace flying the flag there, captain once again, tied for second in Jeddah last week. That was for his birdie at 17. So welcome back inside the booth here, myself, Arlo White, Jerry Foltz and David Fairty. Three players tied at six under. Uh, we've got eight tied at five under and a further six tied at four under. For the neutrals, this is what we want, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Good players going head to head and all being very and, close. You know, we have had some compacted leaderboards over yeah. over the, our time here at Live, but I don't think I've seen one like this. No, if you had 144 players in the field, you yeah. might some, yeah. see, some, <laughs> see something like this as Rom hits his provisional on 18. But I think, quite honestly, and that one's well right, I think, quite honestly, it's a golf course. We have great scoring digits out there today, the lightest wins we're going to have all week, and a course where most of the players are playing from the same positions in the fairways, whatever club it takes them to get there. The course forces that. You can't really overpower this golf course. You can't take advantage of many of the guys' main strength, David, which is power. Yeah, it, well, exactly. You know, some of the shorter hitters are in there, and, and it's about where you place it on the golf course to give yourself a chance, and there's a lot of guys doing that. Yeah. Of everybody that's playing excellent golf out there, it, it, does John Rahm stick out to you at the moment? He did until just a moment ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did, and uh, I'll be interested to see where his second tee shot is there if his first one is in fact out of bounds yeah. um, you know you that's the last thing you need when you've got the momentum like he has he, he does stick out a little bit because he's the highest ranked player mm. uh, he viewed as maybe the best player in golf right now certainly Joaquin Nima is the hottest player in professional golf right now uh, yeah but there's a lot of great resumes uh, top to bottom there's a lot of great resumes and how about the crushers who went 20 under par on Sunday to take the title in Jeddah the form team, there's no doubt, are reigning champions as well, and they're tied for the lead once again. I mean, the, the consistency that that quartet shows, only three scores count today and tomorrow, of course, all four on Sunday. But it, it, it's, it's turning into, I wouldn't say a dynasty just yet, but they're turning into a dominant quartet. Yeah, they are. But I think you've got to keep your eye on the Stingers uh, this week. They're so good on these grainy greens. Uh, you know, those, these are the greens that they grew up on in South Africa. You know, really tough to read. And it wouldn't surprise me at all to see them come out on top this week. The Crushers, you mentioned the steadiness and consistency, Arlo. They have three guys on that team, the three veterans who've had long and very consistently good careers in professional golf. Then you got Bryson DeChambeau, the captain, the youngest guy, maybe the most volatile of all of the guys on the team, but obviously the one with the most upside based on his power and uh, the fact that he's won one major to date and feels like when he's playing his best, he can win anything. That was Burmester at 15. Well, that's going to help. Here's Brooks at 17 just a moment ago. Beautiful. Chikara at seven. This would get him to five. Yeah. Charles Howell the third. This is great news for the Crushers, and he's joined the party at six under par. Why not? That was 30 at 13. Seven iron. 
this left hole location. Yeah, the wind caught that. Brandon Grace for birdie at two. He teed off at five. Yes. Oh, Beautifully read. Rom's second chop with his first oh, ball. No. Oh no. Oh, he hit right into the face of the cart path and now it's toast. What a horrible, horrible break. Yeah. Need a ruling. What are the odds of that happening, really? Right into the curb of the cart path that doesn't have a curb. That's unbelievable. Even a man that skilled would struggle to do oh, that again if he tried. Well, I mean, you'd take your bat and ball and go home. Wow, what a turn of affairs. Was the aggressive play off the tee, didn't execute the shot, and I mean, he's staring triple in the face now. Brad Ullman. Hey, Brad. Yeah. Uh, so it's right here, hit it to the edge of the path and came all the way down there. I'm guessing that's another path. So. Well, I mean, if that ball is unplayable, he's really only got a couple of options that would seem viable. You can take the two club lengths or you can keep that ball okay, that point between nice himself and hole and go as far back as he wants but neither of which is any good at all or he can just replay the shot yeah david that's the thing about the 18th okay Louis. when you play that aggressively off the tee you're just staring at bogey in a big number if you missed a fairway just not a lot of room for error really quite surprised Decided to go with the driver off the tee. Pete Burmester is seven under now. Eugenio Chicada coming off a birdie. This is his tee shot at eight. Dean Burmester is six under par over his last five holes. That includes an eagle at 13. Let's get back to John Rahm. Yeah, no, and part of his problem is there's there's no holes in the canopy here. It's not like he can go high and the, there's water in front of the green. So yeah. he's just going to have to play his original chip shot out, I imagine, Sue Ann. Yeah, that looks like what he's doing. He's just looking down the line. There's only one window for him to take, David. This is his fourth shot. That break was a two shot penalty. Yeah, it really yeah. was. By the way, Louis just punched out. To the fairway. I'll go knock it across the fairway. There are those two steps. The level's done. <laughs> Well, it had all been relatively serene for John Rahm up until this point. Here's Cam at 16. Yeah, nice shot. Another beautiful right. shot. Now live, Joaquin Newman. Beautiful tee shot, just had a low screamer from left to right. That's got to go. Rahm's fifth at 18. Yeah, this is not an easy shot either. Downhill line to a front hole location. Yeah. 
That ball adjacent to the hole belongs to Louis Oosthuis, and he had to punch out, but this is his third shot. So a likely par there for Louis to keep it at six under, but our leader is his teammate, Dean Burmester. Trouble at 18 for John Rahm. I find the front right bunker here. A little on the upslope, not a particularly difficult shot. Oh, we got too much of it. Dean Burmester is on a real roll here at the Hong Kong Golf Club to get it to seven under par. This was an eagle putt at 13. Immediately followed by a birdie four, a three I should say, a 14. And then this is second shot into 15. Also a par four where he would make birdie. Yeah, that's a five shot spell and six under. It's, uh... he's, he's got birdie at 11, birdie at 12, eagle 13, birdie 14. 30, 15. What could he do at 16? Well, that was head height. Thank you. Thanks. John Rahm trying to save double at 18. When I got here on Tuesday, that was the one thing. Dom highlighted to me about this hole. You can really make a big number if you're not careful off that tee box. Wonder if he'll play it differently tomorrow. Seems pretty composed. And they'll walk up to the screen. I'm sure he's boiling on the inside. Oh, he knew it immediately. Triple bogey seven. Just when you thought it was smooth sailing. Oh, Bryson, what on earth was that? I think he hit it fat. Yeah. This is like he took a divot in front of the ball. Meanwhile, on the green at eight, Eugenio Shikara. He's got this one to get it to six. Stroke, beautifully done. Waco, Joaquin Neiman at 16. He has this for birdie. Yeah, he'll be disappointed. It's always difficult to get it all the way back to this pin when it's on the back of the green. It always seems to play half a club longer, but it's makeable. Yeah, it is. Ooh. This was just before Chikara putted out at number eight to save par for Anthony Kim. Nicely done. Over at 14, Charles Howell. Yeah, very nice. Abe answer. Eagle putt. Number three to tie the lead. Not to avoid a ghastly three putt at 16. This is Bryson.
Mm. He'll be kicking himself on his way to the next tee. You just cannot stop Richard Bland for the cliques. Maybe they're a player for most of the last two years. That for Birdie out at number two. Dickie! <laughs> Dickie B! Now captain of the Ironheads, Kevin Na. Trickling one home at 18 for Birdie. Back to Cam Smith at 16, Dom. Yeah, very good chance putting from the correct side. It's about as straight as putt he's going to get on this screen. And there's still a little bit of movement, but uh, you know, he's starting to find his game. Certainly in this back nine, driving the ball very nicely. He's in his iron shots, apart from the last one with his eight iron, his wedges seem to be very much on point with the distance control. He usually gobbles these up. Yep. Yeah. Cam's in contention. Make no mistake. And he gets it to four under three back of our leader on day one, Dean Burmester. That was around a couple of uh, Aussie fans earlier this week, and um, they pointed out that Cam hasn't been in contention since his nuptials. I'm not sure it means anything. I'm sure it doesn't, actually, but <laughs> just coincidence. Not think it's picked him up. Well, here's an interesting one for Brooks. He's going to have to turn you know, this. Back bunker isn't bad, right? <laughs> I mean, long's obviously better. What have you got out? Eight. Was it for the hole? When you just hit a three quarter one play at 170 okay. and if it ends up in the front bunker it's fine and it? it's all you can do you don't have to move it much middle of the green yeah the problem is you can't move it much from right to left out of this lie so that front bunker is not bad no. let it go. yeah yeah that's a good shot Doesn't look like it, but it was. Charles Howell to tie the lead on the 14th green. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, we haven't seen much of Taylor Gooch today, but here he is at 16. The Live Golf League is always looking to improve the fan experience both during the broadcast and on site. To see the best players in the game for yourself in 2024, just scan the QR code on the screen for tickets to future events. We'll be in Miami at Doral's Blue Monster the first week in April. Then it's on to Adelaide, Australia and Singapore in the weeks that follow. Get your tickets now and enjoy the golf. Moronk at 16. 62 in his opening round in Jeddah last weekend. One over par thereafter. He was actually penalised a stroke for slow play, wasn't he, on Sunday? He was. His uh, 17th hole happened on number 18. Group was on the clock. And he had told the rules officials, because the rules officials handed off from one to another once they get to a certain point, that he thought they were off the clock, even though they weren't told that. And uh, took two minutes and 20 seconds to hit a shot. And it was windy, and there's a lot on the line, but still. Cost him a few shekels. Yeah. Well, that's... You hate to see anybody get penalized as we watch our leader, Dean Burmester, play in his second at 16. You hate to see anybody get penalized, but you do love 
an Clinton organization golf. doing something proactive to combat the greatest demon in all of the game. Yeah. The slow play. Yeah. Well, now Brooks has actually come up with what looks like on the down slope here, and that is not so good. He's got to get this ball up very quickly. He'd love to be on the upslope in front of him. Excuse me, sir. Oi. Oi, Jimmy. For fuck's sake. By the tree, yeah, thank you. Thanks. So the club face wide open. We'll try and just chop the legs out from underneath this. Oh, and he played a beauty. Runs out a little on him, but that was a very, very difficult shot. Martin Keimer over at the sixth. Oh, right in the middle. That got Marty Keimer back to five under par. <laughs> and the Cleeks had a healthy lead at one point, uh, but they've slipped to fifth now. Ten under par, three back of the podium. The way he was Tazen. Just faded that drive a few yards too many. Bit of an unfortunate bounce. No trouble though. Nothing in his way. You know, one thing that struck me about talking to him during hang time. Everyone sees him as such a simple guy. Nothing much going on. Rachel, as he admitted, there's a lot going on in between the years. He's really hard on himself. Probably harder than people think he is. Whole location today tucked behind that right greenside bunker. get the, the jump out of it that he was expecting maybe well one of the pathways into the live golf league is to win the international series only one event so far and it was dominated by live players that was in oman a couple of weeks ago carlos ortiz took the win louis eustace in second waco neiman was a third torque had three of the top five players but like Andy Ogletree last year, if you finish top of the rankings, 10 events in the International Series, you are automatically promoted into the Live Golf League for 2025. Burmester at 16. Outside chance at birdie here to get it to eight under. And a two-shot lead. Online at dead weight. They can't, Bryson here, they can't see the bottom of the pin. They can't really almost see the putting surface just halfway up. Just makes it a little difficult to judge the distance. Good shot. No. And before that, Joaquin Neiman. Oh, Joaquin. 
he was holding the pose. And that's why. A beautiful shot, and it's got him to four under par. Everything he touches, it seems, at the moment, turns to gold. Now live with Cam Smith. Starting to swing it really nice, as I said. I'm just talking to his coach, Cam. Uh, Grant Field, he agrees, but that wasn't very good. Well, it's been quite a run for Waco, as we mentioned. He's won two of the opening three Live Golf League events. He was Australian Open champion before Christmas, tied fourth in the Dubai Desert Classic. Third place in Oman a couple of weeks ago. A man on a tear as Golf Digest mentioned the other day. And he's in contention once again here on four under three back of the leader, Dean Burmester. Anuban Lahiri said two fine shots into this 13th. I'll make that three. That's an eagle. Luis Tazen, that's his third shot at the first. Nicely played. Brooks for par at 18. That's a great four from an awkward spot. All of a sudden, walk on Neiman is in the picture again. John Rahm has for a bounce back birdie after that triple bogey. I'll tell you what, he seems pretty calm. Seemed to have left everything that had happened on the 18th green. He had a fantastic drive here in the first. Pitching wedge to this point. Sometimes it's just unfortunate you make one bad swing and cost you three shots. Well, the grain is all over the place here. On the green at 17, you can see those uh, patches there. Yeah, and this green is a double green, shares with the 13th. Yeah. So they're just respecting the players on the other green, and they're waiting, them, waiting for them to finish out. Whilst we wait, we'll send you to the second, and Henrik Stenson with an opportunity here to get to six under par. Cam's ready now. Yeah. Nine. Sorry, I was about to say nine pars in a row for Stenson now. Take it away. Yeah, as Davis said, lots of grain changes, but it it is predominantly down grain. Well, Matt Jones has uh, missed the eighth green to the right. This was his second shot. He didn't. <laughs> he did. Jones gets it to six under. The first round of 64 for Matt Jones. Yeah. 
Bryson DeChambeau three. at 17. Yeah, I like that better too. You're good to go. He wasn't happy with himself leaving the 16th green. No. Oh, it was a terrible first putt, but actually the second shot from the middle of the fairway with a wedge in his hand was almost as bad, left it 50, 60 feet short. That's a better effort. That'll cheer him up. Well, it's another one of a mounting list of excellent days for Bryson DeChambeau, who is five under. Chicana finished his day with a power of nine, so an opening round 64 for the Fireballs man. Harold Varner at 15. Oh, yeah. He's six under par. Richard Bland for birdie at four. <laughs> Go on, Dickie. Great effort. He's not the first player in history to play his best golf at a later stage in his yeah, career. Yeah. But it is unusual. Henrik Stenson, short one for par. Oh. Oh my. 180. Oh, a lot of that ball went into the hole. Abraham Answer has this one to end his day tied for the lead. Get a good putt. Very nice. 63 for Abe Answer. Burmester's final full shot of the day. Brooks in the right rough at one. He's got to cut this one. Fabulous shot. Charles Howell the third for birdie at 15. The first round at 64 for Charles Howell the third. Susan Johnson. On his final hole, par three, the second. He's got a pitching wedge. He's playing 146. Hole locations all the way back. Got to definitely carry that 15 paces on the green. Sit. Well, that one close was Louis Oosthuizen. And he did Nine it iron like that. For Louis. John Rahm, last one to hit off this tee. I have to say, I'm very impressed with how he composed himself after that disaster on 18th. And this is a nine iron. A guy of his caliber, he knows there's a lot more golf to be played. He 
He's swinging the club beautifully. Just has to stay patient and not make those same mistakes. Well, if he could knock that in, that would leave a better taste in his mouth. Boy, what a finish for the big fella. Martin Keimer. That was for birdie at seven. He's back to six under. A 64 for Martin Keimer as well. And Kali Samoya is finished. He is one under. Remember, he was five under par through his first six holes. In the end, the Finnis carded a 69. Mark Leishman at 13. Yep, I would have got it there. Now well, Cam Smith is going to leave it up top on the flat. It's one of the most intimidating tee shots in the game, David. Mm -hmm. As you know, you played here. Yeah. Especially into the wind. And on Sunday, when you're in contention, boy, does it look narrow. Which you were, David. Second Ooh. place to Ian Woosner. In 1987, still, I think it still, was. Still counts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> whether it's it's lost in the swirling mist of time. That's not good. Now, do you have a favorite Live Golf League team yet? Now you can represent with pride thanks to the great merchandise available at shop.livegolf.com, the Live Golf online store. Grab a Legion 13 cap, a Stinger's quarter zip, Crusher's t-shirt, four aces polo, 13 teams and 54 players. Some great gear for you there. I think I just said a Legion 13 cat. I meant cap. <laughs> well, they're they're uh, uh, their symbol is a lion. It is. Yeah, that's a cat. Dustin Johnson is for a birdie. Spoke to him as we're walking up the first green. He said, "Well, I just need to make a putt today." Certainly left a few out there. This is a bit of a tricky one. It's going to slope right to left. It's a bit of shadow close to the hole. Well, he's done that all day. Burned the edges. with the birdie would certainly make his day a little bit better. As I said last week, he doesn't actually go to the range when he plays poorly. He actually goes to the range when he's playing well. Something quite interesting about John. like a 67 three under par for John Rahm on day one and he'll be left to rue that triple bogey seven at 18 it could have been so much better 82 is a great pitch Pit playing yeah 
What, 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 I mean, what shot are you trying to hit? I mean, 80. Well, so wait for Waco. Let's send you to hole number two and Louis to tie the lead at seven under par. Oh, wow. That just snapped on him. Yeah, that missed the hole by an inch. Another man with a opening round of 64, six under par for Louis Oosthuizen, who finished tied second in Jeddah last week. Now the green at 17, and Dean Burmester for the outright lead. And what would be a 62? On the fifth green, Abraham Answer has left us in an awkward spot, just on the edge, the collar of the rough there. He played that very well. Brooks Kepka with a 65 today. This is for birdie at one. So he started the season with 10 straight rounds in the 60s. Oh. Neiman's on the way. And he had, he had to cut that. Very difficult from those lies. Oh, poor tee shot from Cam, but could have been a lot worse. He can only see the right edge of the green. That's his start line. But uh, with an eight iron, obviously just hood it a little bit. He can get plenty of turn on it and head it towards that middle of the green. But uh, pretty strong wind into him. That front bunker very much in play. Oh, oh just cleared the water. By yeah. two yards. I think he thought it was wet when he hit it. He gave up on it quickly. Okay. So anywhere on the on the pin or right of it's perfect. Good lie for Bryson. Pretty tight lie. And uh, he's got a direct line if he chooses, but. Just to be safe and sorry, start it right yeah. at the trees. Only has to bend it a few yards. Well, not at all. Be middle of the green. Shots. That's too far. Oh boy. So, Anne, it's all yours. Louis, fantastic round today, bogey free, six under par. You seem so comfortable out there. What about this golf course suits your game? Um, I don't know. I don't think you're ever comfortable around here. Um, no, just, um, you know, you don't really have to eat the long one all the time. Um, you can give yourself quite a few wages um, and uh, really good par threes. Um, I'm hitting the ball pretty good right now and I'm trying to give myself as many putts as I can and um, horrible read and horrible stroke on the last one there, but the race was pretty good. You seem to have turned your game around in the last six months. What has contributed to that? <laughs> I think try a little less and just have fun. Um, a lot of times you, you're overthinking it, and I think uh, lately I try and just enjoy a little bit more out there and, and um, you know, just have, have a little bit more fun. Spoke to your teammate, Brendan Grace, this morning. He said he was pretty disappointed with your results last week on the Sunday. Seemed like you guys hit a wall. This is according to his words. You guys are in the lead again. What do you think is going to be key to keeping that lead this week? Well, around here, there's definitely a lot of birdies. Um, so you would think tomorrow is probably going to somewhat, some team is going to do 13, 14, 15 under again. Um, so, yeah, we need to keep playing the way we're playing. And, um, you know, 
We know Charles got a few good rounds in him, so he'll bounce back from today and um, hopefully Stingers can pull it through. All right, well, well played today. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Cam in the bunker at 18. Well, he's got it on the upslope a little bit here. This is not so difficult. Not at all. Could have been a lot, lot worse. Oh, yes. Didn't catch it the way I wanted to. Well, uh, Dom Waco has one that looks even easier. Well, he's three, four yards closer. So yeah, yeah similar lie. I mean, the, the bunkers here are very nice, great texture. Yeah, they Little, are. Yeah, there's a nice firmness underneath them. You can do whatever you want with it. Cam was very upset with his. I expect this to be a lot better. No, not that much better. No, it's not great. These guys expect to get those up there within that three foot circle. That kind of shot. Bryson, has he got to bump this into the bank? Looks like it's severe down down slope. Yeah, and that is awkward because he's going to be tossing that into the grain. Yeah. And that and ball can a, kick up in the air on him if he's not careful. And it's a pretty steep slope, David. Yeah. And then when it hits the green, it's running away from him. Goes too far, it's still going to stay up on top over there. Yeah. Bounces and goes to the right. That's the play. Yep. I mean, just over 400 yards, and we could see three bogeys on this hole from these three superstars. Most of his weight on his left foot, shoulders parallel to the slope. Just a little punch. Got caught in the grain. I think he hit that the way he wanted to. Dom just didn't get the result. It's that grain. Yeah. Henrik Stenson, after the very short miss on the previous hole, came back to take a peek at him. This is for Birdie on his final hole. Shampo sizing up his chance at par, first to putt after that. Yeah. You know, it's the wind switched in the middle of the yeah, round. Yeah, it's good. And it's a heavy wind, David. You said 15? 15 feet. Okay. I mean, for instance, 15, if there was no wind, Bryson would have blown it over the. Yes. So, how many inches you got it? Yeah, I, I halfway expected him to hit driver there, but... Uh, yeah, and he ended up hitting the nine, and he had over 200 yards to the hole. Yeah, yeah. It, it just can change so dramatically around here, and if the wind is going to be what it's forecasted, boy, we're going to see some fun, have some fun on the weekend. Well, we are. <laughs> I like it. I like to see them struggle a little bit around this golf course. This well, little you're pitch a and putt. <laughs> A great Same par at 18, and it's a first round for an informed Bryson DeChambeau of 65, five under par. Well, the golf course is a hit for folks watching around the world. There's something about a golf course in a big city that's been around for long enough that the city has grown around it. Hong Kong Golf Club, 
Harding Park in uh, San Francisco, LACC, Emirates GC in Dubai all come to mind, says pro golf critic. The Hong Kong Open has been played here for over six decades. This course opened in 1911, the Hong Kong Golf Club, 1889. Eric Stenson to finish his day on the third. <laughs> 66 for Henrik. Waco for par on the 18th. Marco Neiman at 18, a 67 3 under par in his opening round. And the last shot of the day. Camp Smith certainly hopes so. And a 67 to open his campaign here in Hong Kong, where he finished second at the Hong Kong Open last year, Count Smith. Thanks, brother. Good luck this weekend. Have a good weekend. Yeah, have a great weekend, guys. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. There you go. Here, Kim. Kim. Hey, Waco, can I get my uh, card? Dom, down to you. Bryson, slow start to your round, but you took advantage of the easier back nine. You happy with your score? Yeah, I mean, five, anytime you shoot five under is uh, good feed at any uh, professional golf course. So, you know, the lead's at seven. Uh, made a couple of mistakes with some irons and three putted 16, which I was pretty bummed about. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to work on my iron play a little bit. Drove it beautifully and uh, keep it up for tomorrow and the next few days and give myself a chance. What's so difficult about this 6,700 yard golf course? Because Scoring's not as low as people expected. No, I mean, the, the difficulties around the greens. There's a lot of tricky reads. The grain's going the other way and the slope, and so it throws a lot of people off, and you really got to take that into consideration and be a good iron player. These uh, greens are pretty deceptive. You can see they fall off and uh, get in some, some big trouble. I was lucky to get up and down on 18, though. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, it was good up and down. Nice playing. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Well, let's uh, take a look at some Bryson DeChambeau highlights over the course of his last six rounds in the Live Golf League. Two 62s, 63, and today's 65. That was for birdie at seven. This is uh, birdie at 10. Second shot into the 11th for Bryson. The Crushers are one off the lead that is held by Stinger GC. It's another excellent day for the Crushers. 15 under par collectively, Stinger 16 under. And Cam and his Ripper GC are contending as well. We'll wrap things up here at Hong Kong.
in a few moments' time. Oh, your impressions then, gentlemen, of the first round? Uh, I, I just think it's a marvelous golf course. I think the golf course is a big star of the show in, in, yeah. a, in a league with a bunch of genuine stars. This one's a little older, and it uh, holds its own. Now, uh, the scores are not exactly high on this golf course. I don't, I don't know exactly no. what low scoring uh, might be in other conditions, but... 263s, 264s, couple 65s, a host of 66s. It's pretty, pretty solid golf, top to bottom. But we did see a few guys struggle. Phil Mickelson shooting 80 today. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, didn't see that coming. Uh, and I thought the scoring would be lower. I mean, the golf course really held up. I think, you know, there wasn't that much wind. Um, it was. Uh, it, yeah, I think you're right. It was the, uh, it was the star player today, Hong Kong Golf Club. While well, Neiman came in in such incredible form. Three under par at 67 after that bogey at 18. And of course he holed out for Eagle at 17. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau, both he and his team are in magnificent form at the moment. Both he and Brooks Kepka will tee it off on Super Saturday, five under par after 65s, back two back else. of our leaders, Dean Burmester and Abraham Anser. Thank you so much. You're Thanks, Brighton. Your YouTube videos are great. You watch it all the time. Thank you. Jill, you want to say hi? Hi. All right. Bryson DeChambeau is uh, hanging around and signing autographs, taking selfies for the galleries. What was the star of the show, David, for you today on day one? I think Hong Kong Golf Club. Really, you know, it's such an unusual golf course for us. We, when do we play a 6,710 yard golf course, Jerry? And, uh, you know, they, the guys played well, there's some low scores, but the, this golf course really held up. Yeah, there were a few that struggled as well. It was kind of the, like we said at halftime show, it's kind of the great equalizer the golf course is because nobody can truly overpower it. It just doesn't set up that way. And it's just one of those more classic examples in this day when technology is such a big talk. The USGA and RNA are rolling back the golf ball to try and protect the old courses. I don't think they need to. The old courses mm -hmm. protect themselves just fine if designed properly. Dean Burmester and Abraham Anser, um, obviously chasing their first Live Golf titles, but they're two very, very good young players and will be delighted, I'm sure, with 63, seven under par and the joint lead overnight. Oh, no question. Uh, but you've got a bunch of guys behind them. Uh, someone like a Brooks Kepka, who just, he had one of those days, Jerry, where he, he just didn't seem to be, you know, right on or whatever, and, but, you know, he ends up with 65. Yeah, it, He's that kind of a player. He doesn't have to play that well to... To shoot those low numbers, I think he's going to be very dangerous this weekend. I hear that's a nice feeling, not having to play your best yeah. to be in contention against a, a, <laughs> a group of players like this. But, uh, yeah, it, there's a lot of guys. Though. There are so many guys in contention after round one, and that is a little bit rare. And what did uh, Charles Schwartz will say after Las Vegas? I've got a memory like a goldfish. Yeah, and which he is came a... tied second in Jeddah, yeah. and he's helped Stinger to the top of the leaderboard today, 16 under par, one ahead of the Crushers. Now, for those around the world leaving, us now it's time to switch over to club 54 the live golf post round show which can be found globally on live golf plus and the live golf youtube channel or in the usa on the cw app join us tomorrow for our second round coverage from live golf hong kong 12 o'clock local in the usa on the cw on delay at 12 30 eastern we can't wait we will see you then goodbye for now A wrap. Day one has come to an end, and we are live from Hong Kong right here at the Hong Kong Golf Club. Abraham Answer, Dean Burmester tied at one, and Stinger GC doing their thing as the team leaders. And we 
are here to chat about it. Welcome to Club 54 post round show. I am your host, Christian Crosby, and joining me today is the one and only hometown hero, Don Boulay, is in the house. Man, I love Hong Kong. We talked about it earlier, and what a day we had with day one, Dom. I mean, how, did you have a good time or what? How can you not have a good time here, <laughs> Christian? Come on. Yeah, this is the coolest town in the world. You, but, uh, yeah, I had a great time following three superstar players. Uh, surprisingly, scoring not as low as I thought at the start of the day with the uh, course being as soft as it yeah. was because the, the greens were really soft. I was seeing pitch marks that uh, were, you know, really big and balls were spinning back. You don't see that very often. I thought 50 watch was in, in play, but as it turned out, no, not really. It was tricky out there. Would you say you were surprised overall at how the guys yeah. played the course today? Yeah, I was very surprised. I mean, the group I was following, Neiman, uh, Smith and DeChambeau, they really struggled on the front nine, but they got it going on the back nine, as you expect, because that back nine is much simpler than the front nine, but I thought it would be better than that. Well, Bryson, DeChambeau, you got to talk to just yeah. now. How do, how do you think he – I mean, it's just so much fun to watch him and crush a GC. You know what? He had a big crowd out there, and they they were egging him on to hit the driver as much as possible. And he hit it more than I thought he would, and uh, he took advantage when when he could. It that, was it was quite impressive. The, the crowd here in Hong Kong, Dom. Yeah, it's I'm cool. impressed with the crowd here. Yeah, yeah, they were loud. Yeah, they yeah, were into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Not quite loud as where you're from, but it's loud. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at Bryson's highlights from today. Yeah. Dom, take us through what you saw. You were right there in the action. Yeah, he hit, hit a massive are. drive on three. He had a wedge in on this par five, almost made it for Eagle, and uh, he got off to a decent start. And this was on seven. There's, he was on above the pin. That's a really quick putt, not an easy one to read. So good birdie there on the seventh. And this was on 10. And look at the break on this. He walked off the green, and I said, can you believe how much break there's on that putt? And he said, no, but he read it perfectly. The pace got that one in the hole. Nice crowd behind that. that There's tent. that crowd we talked about. He hit a massive drive here, 55 yards from the front edge of the green. The hole's like 465. Love that. Yeah. Here. And this was a nice one. He made a terrible bogey on 16. He was mad. Then look at that little fist pump. That was a little bit of redemption on 17. After, and he made a great par on 18. Yeah. After after watching Bryson today, was was there anything? unique or a biggest takeaway you have from watching him uh, what was unique is yeah. I didn't expect him to be to hit as many drivers uh, and in fact the wind changed on the back nine if it hadn't uh, holes like 15 he would have probably hit driver there to try and clear the stream that runs across the fairway 17 maybe even would have attempted to clear the stream on 17 but yeah. uh, because of the wind change he had to be a little bit more conservative and actually on 15 he was way conservative maybe a little too much so yeah. uh, leaving himself much longer second shots than he should have had super exciting to watch and the fans are absolutely excited about it let's take a look at a tweet from a fan here live golf league is that drive of bryson DeChambeau on three the longest ever hit on that hole it's a i've been down there <laughs> what do you, you dom <laughs> if anyone would know the answer to this question it would be you uh, i mean what do you say dom yeah I, no i've seen other guys down there but uh, when it was the wind was a little bit stronger helping so no i have seen it down there but uh, not in these conditions especially as soft as it was out there now are you expecting to see bryson continue this yeah. heat as we go into day yeah. two he, he he's got the bit between his teeth you can see he's very determined he's got that look in his eyes and you know he said he was going to work on his irons when i interviewed him uh, i think his irons were a little bit off his tee shots were, were fine today so yeah he was you know the distance control wasn't great especially with the short irons and he only has short irons into yeah. this golf course well into most golf courses he only has short irons but uh, i think that'll be a busy, busy place you see cam smith there on the corner he uh he's working on something he's got his coach Grant Field standing behind him he's up here from uh, from Australia from the Sunshine Coast and they're always working on the same things he really is just trying to shorten Cam Swing, uh, Smith's backswing I wanted to, to bring up Cam Smith and talk a little you had the chance to watch him also yeah. in your round just what, what did you think here's a tag board of, of Cam as we're talking about it and uh, Cam Smith's wedges and putter are simply not working today off the tee you just don't know what you're gonna get what's your take on this Dom 
Yeah, I mean, in the middle of the round, sort of, he, it got better. He started off uh, not great. I was actually out there with Greg Norman on the third. Cam hit a poor second uh, tee shot on the, on the second. Yeah. And, you know, even with a wedge, he was so stuck behind it and it fanned it out to the right, went down into the bunker and he made a bogey. But uh, he got it back. He got it back. He's looking quite comfortable. Bogeyed the last. Uh, got lucky. Almost went in the water with a second shot. Cleared it by two yards. Could have yeah. made a double easily. And you are, I mean, we might as well bring up Waco Neiman, right? He's been obviously killer today. Yeah. It wasn't the day he was hoping for. Uh, but what would you say overall from what you saw from Neiman today? A little disappointing. Yeah. A little disappointing. Not nowhere near as sharp as he was last Sunday uh, in Jeddah when he won by four. I mean, that was some of the best golf I've ever, ever witnessed. But today, he was certainly off. And surprise, he was not as aggressive off the tee. He left himself some longer seconds. You know, as good a driver as he is, or has been for the last three months, I expected him to hit more Dom, drivers I must, off I the must say you were, uh, you were doing your thing out there. I saw you at hole 10, uh, yeah. and I asked you for your autograph, yeah. and you said you were too busy for me. Well, I said, <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. I mean, really? <laughs> I'm kidding, Dom. Hey, really? You did a great job out yeah. there. It was so fun watching you. This is Club 54 post-round show. More to come right here as we continue with the show. Stick around. All right, this is the Live Golf League's first visit to Hong Kong, but many of our players already know this historic club is truly special. And there's a beautiful shot there of the Hong Kong Golf Club. Look at that. Beautiful. We're having a good time here. Stick around for some more. All right. Joining us is Sue Ann Hang. Dom is still rocking out with us. Sue Ann, great job today. Oh, thank you, Christian. Uh, you're, you're always so kind. <laughs> well, why not, right? Uh, why don't you take us through your day? What an amazing day one. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, this golf course, Dom, as we talked about, will bring out some of the best golfers in the world. It is a ball striking golf course. But I got to follow um, later on in my day, I followed Rom and Louis. And Rom was on fire uh, for most of the day until uh, a bit of a hiccup shall we say, on the 18th, but we'll cover that in just a bit. Yeah. Louis, on the other hand, Louis was off to a little bit of a slow start. He was one under in his first seven holes and then really just lit it on the back nine, and he's just, he's so solid. He's been playing some great golf. Um, he won twice in the off offseason. Uh, he came in second in Oman. Yeah. He contended. I think he played really well in Mayakoba. He played really well in Jeddah. He's really, like, his game has been really turned around in the last six yeah, months. Yeah, was it Brandon Grace who said to you that he thinks he's playing the best golf he's ever seen Louis Dean. play? Yeah, that oh, was Dean. Dean. Yeah, Dean, was yeah. yeah. He said, you know, he's practicing the least he's ever <laughs> seen him practice. That's the secret. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, but uh, but it's the best golf he's ever played. And actually, you know, in my post-round interview with Louie, he actually did say, because I asked him, what 
turned your game around? What, what have you been working on? He says, honestly, I've just been trying less. I've been trying to have a bit more fun, trying to go easy on myself. And, you know, he's gone through a couple of injuries. He's had a, a really bad forearm injury. There's literally actually no tendon in there anymore. He's had a bad knee last week. Um, you know, but it just sounds like he's just out there trying to try less. And that's the, the, the thing about golf, isn't it? It's just such a weird game. It really is. It drives you nuts. It is bizarre. <laughs> you know, the harder you try, the bigger your, you know, the greater your expectations. And the expectations is the enemy of good golf. Well, yeah, let's get into some is. Louis Oosthuizen highlights, shall we? All right, let's check them out. Sue Ann, take us through it. Yeah, as I said, you know, he started his day a little slow, one birdie in his first seven holes, then this one on the 15th. What a great birdie putt. Man, he's been rolling the ball yeah. wonderfully. He's tied second uh, for putting sets. Now, this is his second into the 16th. How smooth that swing was. I know, I asked him in hang time if he was sick of people saying that, yeah. and he goes, ah, it's actually a bit more complicated than you think. <laughs> And of course, you got to roll those putts in when you're playing so well. Bogey free today, as you can see in the scorecard. So solid. And I, I'm, I got to follow him last week in Jeddah as well. And I tell you, he's due for a win. He's 100% due for a win. That birdie on the 17th as well. Just missed the green, a little to the right. Good putt. I want to talk a little bit about just how the course held up today and just get both of your opinions on what you noticed the most, like any standouts. As a member it. of the Hong Kong <laughs> Golf Club, I'm really proud how this course held up. The guys were talking, I was sitting on the veranda with my friends who were out here. They're going, they're going to shoot in the 50s today. You know, it's soft and there's no wind. I'm like, nah. I've, I've expected towards maybe 61 or 62, quite a few of them, but not really. Hey, I'm proud. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, there are some really tricky hole locations today that made it tough. You know, I think yeah. a lot of a lot of Hong Kong Golf Club, its protection is the greens. The, the, the yeah. greens are tough out here, and, and, and we, I've definitely seen that in in, in the amount of golf that I've watched today. I, I find when I'm watching, there's always something that surprises me from each and every day. My question for you two is, what's your biggest surprise? Was there any surprise? Anything on a scoreboard that you saw? Anything that you noticed that just took you by surprise? The, the fact that the scores weren't lower. That was the biggest surprise of the day. You know, at the start of the day, like I said, I, I just thought there would be really low scores, maybe even one in the 50s, but yeah. that didn't turn out to be the case. The wind did switch and it was switching constantly, which always keeps them a bit off balance. What about you, Sam? Uh, for me, it's Rom hitting driver on the 18th. I, I was so shocked when he pulled that club out. I was like, what? I thought he was just going to punch a four iron, just play it up to the top deck, give himself an iron shot in. I mean, on the 18th, we talk about it. A par is a great score on that hole. It is an intimidating drive. I was just so surprised he was taking a driver on the 18th. He missed it way left. What happened with his second shot? Did it hit a curb? Yeah, he hit the curb at the cart path, and it just bounced straight back out. But he was trying to just punch out to the He's, fairway, was he? Yeah, he, he oh, was. Well, that's, that's a tough break. Yeah, it is a tough yeah. break. Yeah, I ended up triple bogey there. So that surprised me because he was on a tear all day till that point. While we're on the subject of John Rahm, just from what you saw, uh, what do you think he needs to do to adjust going into day two? Here's a tweet here on the screen. What's happening with John Rahm? People are asking, people are watching. <laughs> uh, you know, is this, uh, fans may, might be a little worried. Sue Ann, what do yeah, you think? It sounds like that, the, the joy of golf. It sounds like that person's <laughs> as surprised as I was when he took that driver on the 18th. I mean, look, I, I'll, I don't know if he'll be taking that driver on the 18th tomorrow. I think his caddy, Adam Hayes, might try and talk him out of it. Uh, you know, an interesting thing about John that I shared on the broadcast is he doesn't actually go to the range when he plays poorly. And he didn't play poorly today. All right, he was great. He was playing great golf right up to that point. It was one bad swing, perhaps even a, a course management mistake that he made. But it really would surprise me if he took a driver on the 18th tomorrow. You know, I've been to every Hong Kong Open been involved either as a player or a commentator since 1984 except for the four years I was in college but I did play a couple of times even back then so that's 40 Hong Kong Opens you know how many disasters I've seen on 18 <laughs> hundreds I'm sure. hundreds <laughs> I mean it's 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 a crazy hole crazy yeah. scary it's hole. taken some victims I think <laughs> well we, we got to see that today but here's another thing here on the screen and it's a tweet a uh, pro golf critic has something to say. There's something about a golf course in a big city that's been around for a long enough that the city has grown in around it. Uh, do you agree with this, Dom? There's something I haven't picked there. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? 40 years ago, there was not one building in this area. You couldn't see one building. It was all agricultural land, all rice paddies. But uh, obviously now we're kind of in the middle of the city. Well, uh, Dom, thank you so much. Sue Ann, thank you so much. Stick around here. It's Club 54 Pro Surround Show.
And uh, we have a special guest in just a moment joining us. And as you can see, uh, the sun is finally setting here in Hong Kong. A little chilly. It went from hot to not. Uh, <laughs> uh, I got my jacket on now. So uh, we're going to get into our, our special guest in just a moment. Let's take a look at some social media. And let me remind you, fans, we want you to tweet as much as possible. You can make uh, this show and get your uh, tweets on TV. And this is from the Crushers. Going 20 under his team in the final round is un. Real. Couldn't agree more with that. And uh, on the subject, we have a special guest joining us. Joining us from Crushers GC, Charles Howell III. Let me scoot in here. Uh, you know, welcome to the show, first and foremost. How are you feeling, man? It's, it's a big deal to be on the show here. Oh, my wow. gosh, I'm, it in, is. I'm in royalty here. But <laughs> That's how uh, we feel with uh, you here. No, 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 no. no. I, I've got to play really good to show up here. So I got... Dom said I played good. This is his golf course, so we, I think did it all right. We think you played pretty well today. <laughs> Why don't you, up for the fans, just tell us what went well for you today? Uh, well, this is a tricky golf course. I mean, this place, I mean, you know better than anybody. It, it's hard. It's, um, you know, there's some there's some shots where you have to hit really good shots and get a little bit of a, you know, good break with it. So uh, I can't believe how low the scores were, to be honest. And uh, shows the depths of fields out here and uh, two, more, uh, two more tough days ahead. Shall we uh, get into some highlights? So some of your highlights, yeah. So the first one, the birdie on the third, Charles. Yeah, you Talk know, us through it. The greens are so good uh, right now. There's a, a little bit of grain in them. Um, you just got to pay attention to a bit of the grain and the slope. But uh, yeah, they're uh, they're rolling really nice right now. And yeah, you know, if, if if we miss putts, it's uh, it's our fault, not the greens. But they are hard to read, aren't they? Because oh. there's grain in them. Oh, there is grain yeah. in them, and a lot of the times it looks flatter than it really is. Um, but uh, here's uh, obviously the 10th uh, hole here. It's a tricky wedge shot there at, with that. At one stage, that was the toughest hole in the golf course. I can't believe that. The well, 10th. it's where that hole's at. Yeah. It's just, it's a it's a tricky read. But yeah, the wind bounces around this place too, um, as you well know. But uh, here was a good one here on 11. 11 is playing a bit easier today down off the right. Um, yeah. Nice birdie here. But you know, it's uh, as you said, the, you got to pay attention to the grain in these greens. Yeah, you do. And the wind was switching all over the place too. Oh, it all was. Day, wasn't it? You know, it was switching a bit in the practice rounds. And I didn't, I'm like, is this normal around here or not? And they said, not really, but it's, it's on it again today. Well, it's going to be even stronger tomorrow. And it will switch then, too. So well, thanks for the good harder. news. Yeah, thanks no, for the good, good news, Well, you hit a nice low ball. Yeah, you, can, you. you can control <laughs> yourself. Let's talk about your team. You know, I think you're in second place at the moment after a great day. Do you feel like you guys could be dominant this year, the Crushers? Because uh, all four of you are top golfers playing well right well, now. Well, you know, it's... Well, first off, we got a great captain in Bryson. Yeah. And uh, when he gets going, he seems to really make a lot of birdies, right? And... Uh, we've got a good team, but I mean, look at the depths of fields out here. Look at how many great players out here. Are you kidding? It's, it's going to be really hard to be dominant in this yeah. league ever. Yeah, it's true. But uh, Torquay were last year. They won four times. Uh, do you feel like you can match them? Um, well, we, we would love to. You yeah. know, we'd love to. We put the work in for sure. And, uh, you know, Paul and Bond have played great. You know, Paul's obviously a Ryder Cup stalwart for many yeah. years. He's a steady player. Bond's playing awesome. So, you know, Bryson's for sure found his feet with some wins at the end of last year. And so, uh, if I can, if I can hang with those guys, I'll be all right. Well, hang pretty Charles, good. We have uh, some highlights from the team. You might see some of this stuff for the first time, but would love to hear you take us through uh -oh. it and talk about it and comment about it. Here we go, Crushers GC right. highlights. Well, here's Bryson. He's probably hitting this little wedge <laughs> here. Uh, tricky hole location, actually, back right. Wind's kind of done off the left, and uh, that uh, surprises no one that he's hit it there. Um, here, this ugly guy here. He got, he got lucky that one went in. <laughs> Uh, that's why you pay your third baseman. Um, here's uh, here's Bond up one. Uh, Bond's hit the hit the fairway there, which obviously is a is a key shot. He loves uh, it around here. Oh well, oh my gosh, that's it too. You pick up his skin at the end of the day. Um, Paul here, what hole is this, Dom? You know this golf course. I think that's a 16th. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's hard uh, to get it back to that hole. Oh, like, oh, 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 oh he should have. Yeah, you know that's it. some shot with that back left flag. There, yeah. it's really hard to get it back. There. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's always. It, I always tell everybody that shot plays half of the club longer yes. than the actual yard. It's an it's an awkward tee shot too. Yeah. by the way. Yeah, I know. But you know, it's when you come here, you look at the yardage book, sixty-seven hundred yards. You all think you're going to kill it, but. Nobody yeah. ever does. No, no, because, well, first off, you're not hitting drivers everywhere, so yeah. you have to lay back a bit. And uh, it makes you hit every club in your bag around here, yeah. which is uh, which is really cool. You don't uh, you don't see that very often. No, not anymore. Well, you guys made history in Jeddah. You had an incredible comeback. So what we're going to do is let's take a look back at that for a second. Check this out.
Stinger GC have been competitive from the word go, and it's been plain sailing so far in Saudi Arabia. We we're so far behind the Stingers. They were playing great golf. Absolutely magnificent from Dean. He looked up there, and I think all four of the Stingers were in the top 10. They appear unstoppable. So no, no thoughts about winning last week, not at all. Stingers have extended their overnight lead of seven to a commanding nine over Legion 13. I don't want to say we were out of it, but we were so far behind as a team, I think we played maybe a little bit more free. The Crushers tie for third place now. We are like, oh, wow, we're actually catching up, and we just kept playing good. The Crushers are 28 under. Legion 13 are 28 under. OK, then, this is happening. They're 12 under par today. Sting of the leaders by five. And then when I looked up the next time, I saw Bryson's up at six or seven. I'm like, oh, here he goes again. The gap is now one. And I was just thinking, just don't leave it short. Don't leave it short. And then I hit it, and I'm like, I left it short. I left it short. And it's in. The Crushers have come from absolutely nowhere to lead Stinger by a shot. This is quite stunning. And at that point, suddenly it got real, and everybody in my group kind of going, oh, you know, they can see. They know what's going on. I mean, we could have given up. This is something of a collapse by Louis Oosthuizen. The Crushers are disappearing over the hill. One of the all-time great team performances on Championship Sunday. Hey, <laughs> we have something in the crushes that you can't measure. I guess come back. We were 11 shots back. Yeah. yeah. We have a bond. We have a little gang. We have something that I think the other teams look at and they're trying to figure out what we've got and they wish they had it. Charles, first time playing in a tournament in Hong Kong, but you've been here before. A few years ago, you brought your family out here, didn't you? And you, you like to travel the world and let them learn that way. Yeah, so we were here uh, before some events over here, and uh, my son and I came up to play Hong Kong yeah. Golf Club. We ran right into you on the practice on the old team. Course. Uh, we were uh, obviously uh, glad to be here and play it. It was, uh, but it was it's really cool to see uh, to see the golf course. Uh, never been here, never played here before, but uh, it was a uh, it was awesome. Yeah. All right, now Charles, we're going to put you on a spot right now. Okay, right? nothing crazy. Don't don't get worried. But we had some fans submit some questions, okay. and we want you to answer them right here live. Can we do that? Sure. Yeah. All absolutely. right. All right. Let's do it. All right. Here's the first question. I love the world tour aspect, but what is your secret to avoiding and overcoming jet lag? Uh, good question. So the thing I do right when I get there, I work out and really try to just tire myself out and just kill me, <laughs> and then melatonin. And melatonin is uh, is big, but honestly, it's 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 two or three days. And then, then, then it gets to be all right. Exhaust yourself out in melatonin. Correct. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. yes. Yes. Thanks for the honesty. I love that. All right. Next question. What do we got here? What is your favorite golf golf course in the Live Golf League? That's Ooh, a good, good question. question. So, Careful who you're standing next to. Uh, I understand. Uh, I understand. Uh, exactly. Uh, uh, if uh, if it wasn't Hong Kong Golf Club, uh, it'd be Mycoba. That's a place uh, I play there many years and uh, have had success around there. And it's uh, I love that one. All right, I think we'll stop there. Charles Howard III, thank you so much for your time. We hope thank to see you. you back here very soon. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, I got to play good to be here, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. You always do. <laughs> thank you. Dom, thank you as well. More to come right here at Club 54 post-round show. We're having fun here in Hong Kong, Dom's hometown, uh, and more to talk about in just a moment. Anthony Kim was one of golf's brightest stars when he brought his swagger to professional golf. His talent left an impression on his fellow competitors who are excited to have him back. Anthony, 12 years away from the game that you love, how do you assess your first week back? I'm excited to be playing professional golf again. I feel uh, very blessed that I have this opportunity and um, Got a lot to work on, but I had uh, a lot of good things go my way this week, so I'm looking forward to building on that and um, being in contention at some point this year. Oh, yes, Anthony Kim. First competitive birdie in almost 12 years. What are some of the positives that you can take with you to Hong Kong? I, I'm definitely uh, hit the ball well. I'm doing a lot of things well. I know the scores don't reflect that. And, and at the same time, I know I have a lot to build on. And, and um, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. What has it meant to have your daughter and your wife both here to watch you back doing what you love? 
It means everything. I wouldn't be here without them. I just feel so extremely blessed that, that I have this opportunity to create memories with my family. This experience is amazing. Everyone that lives has been uh, first class, and, and moving forward, I hope to represent them well. And some more tweets from the fans, big fans of Crushers. Outstanding job by all four Crushers GC. Couldn't agree with that more, but the Stingers are leading the way so far. Stinger GC. All right, joining us, another great friend of ours. We still have Sue Ann Hang here rocking out. But we have another guest with us in just a moment. This is Club 54, post-round show. All right, so Sue Ann Hang, thanks for sticking around. And joining us is Jerry Fultz. Jerry, how are you? I'm good. You said another great friend. I was I best know. friend this morning. <laughs> Well, is she your best friend too? Well, yeah, she wants got to get some love too, Jerry. I was just about to say you give him way too much credit as a friend. A lot of best. I love both of you. You guys, you guys are so great to me. Jerry, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell us about your day one. It was interesting. I think I think we said it on the show on the broadcast that Hong Kong Golf Club might have been the star of the show in a field full of stars. It's really something special to watch to see old courses like this that hold up so well, Sue Ann, and mm -hmm. it's really nice in this day and age when all the technology gets the headlines and the, and the uh, governing bodies are rolling back the golf ball. You see a course at 6,700 yards long with the most powerful players in the game, and it holds its own. Yeah, I, I love a good old traditional golf course, a course that makes you think, a golf course that really makes you have to be quite creative with your shots, even not just off the tee, but from tee to green as well, and then be really quite protective with your putts. Uh, as Dom said earlier, it, it certainly has protected the score. It wasn't as low as I think we all thought it was going to be. Uh, but yeah, I, I love a good old traditional golf course. It's just, it's so much fun to watch and it makes the players just think extra hard about what they're trying to do. I think it overall, the, the overall scoring in general was pretty darn low, but the, nobody ran away with it. We saw Kelly Samuya and, uh, and Martin Keimer get off to five under par starts after six holes each. And Samuya ended up shooting one under, so mm -hmm. the course can fight back. But when you got guys like that, and then there were fours and there were threes, they were all stacked up. You thought somebody was, we were going to see a bunch of guys in the low, low 60s, and we didn't see that at all. Uh, do, do you think it's more about the course, more about the competition, more about the weather when you see so many guys tied up on the top of that leaderboard? What, what is it really? Well, typically in professional golf, there's horses for courses, meaning that if it's a shorter course that some guys can play well there and are going to play well there and expected to win there. The guy on the PJ Tour for years have made their schedule based around the courses they can play well. Uh, some are, you know, bombers paradises where only long, long players can win. Here, it's, it's a little bit of both because everybody's basically playing from the same areas, but yet there are a few holes where the bombers can take advantage of it if they're brave enough. Most courses that they're bombers paradises, they don't have to be brave. They just have to hit it far. Here, you got to be very, very brave. Um, so the course is kind of the great equalizer there, and it, and it comes down to the actual art of the game, which is the scoring clubs, uh, hitting fairways, hitting greens, on and around the greens, getting it done the old-fashioned way. And I think the course, that's why I say it's a star, because it takes the most talented players in the game and makes them all, separates them by the most, the tiniest intricacy. Well, speaking of brave, I mean, a pretty brave tee shot today by John Rahm on the 18th. That really surprised me. Brave, really... that's not really what you were saying <laughs> off camera. <laughs> I was, I, was, I was a little surprised, but take a look here. He just pulled it straight left. My, my guess was he was trying to just get it all the way down there with his low fade. Absolutely pulled it. It was a one bad golf swing that he had. He was playing so well up to that point. And, and you know, Dom and I talked about this when we got to Hong Kong Golf Club. He said, you know, Hong Kong Golf Club can certainly take it right back from you pretty yeah. quickly and 18th hole is one of those holes and he got really unlucky that was a really bad break hitting the curb and, and bouncing it right back out that was a triple bogey a real unforced yeah. error there i think it was just kind of a a course management mistake i don't really know if he's going to be using that golf uh, that club of that tee yeah. tomorrow i hope adam hayes maybe talks him out of it because if you hit an iron off the tee get on the top, top deck the worst score is maybe a bogey right 
Well, if he doesn't hit the curb, he's making bogey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the curb was a two-shot penalty. The, the tee shot was a one-shot penalty, essentially. But yesterday, I told you on the air, in the Pro-Am, I saw him, and he hit it all the way down on the right edge of the fairway, just short of the water, and he could throw the golf ball into the green from there. And, and you, you make a really difficult hole to a pretty routine hole with one good swing. So yeah. sometimes, you know, in his mind, it was worth the risk at the time. But I think you're right. I don't think driver comes out of the bag there tomorrow. Well, we talked yeah. about John Rahm on the 18. There's someone else who's on the 18 right right now to help us figure it out. Rachel Drummond, we're checking in with you. What's going on, Rachel? Hey, Christian, look who I've got with me. Wade Ormsby, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Now, for the viewers at home, if they don't know, you've won the Hong Kong Open 2017 and 2020, and we've brought you to the most difficult tee shot in golf. You're welcome. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks for that. And someone's turned the fan on. It's cold and it's windy. So I want you to talk us through strategy on 18 and why it is so demanding. So 18th hole here at a Hong Kong golf club, it's one of the more daunting tee shots, especially when you're in the hunt for a golf tournament. So um, we would have seen a variety of plays down here today. Practice round, I was almost influenced by some of the big boys hitting driver down here, but I've always gone with a two iron or a driving iron down here. Um, I just like pitching the ball around 235 yards and then it gets a bit of a bump forwards towards the top of the hill which is about 250 yards so that's what I'm trying to do. I put in a two iron just for this week um, when I play here at Hong Kong and um, yeah that's how I try and tackle it. And quite a lot of players have done the same put time two irons in the bag. Now let's talk about that tree on the right quickly. Yeah so uh, this time of year it's in blossom or whatever you want to call it and uh, it looks actually really like a lot different to what I normally do. Normally it's full of um, leaves and you can uh, makes the hole visually look a lot tighter than what it does now but um, it's still in the way for the errant shot to the right and um, as we saw towards the end of the telecast there were a few shots left and it's very penal over there. Are you saying it's easier because of that tree uh, right now? I think it looks easier but it still doesn't make it too much easier. So Now should we see you hit one? Um, yeah I'll see what I You've can do. You've been excited about this all <laughs> the whole time we've been standing here. All right, let's go. Let's so go here. So you say you've got the two iron. The conditions at the moment, we've got quite a lot of wind into. Yeah, so the wind's into off the left, so I'll go to the right side of the box here. And um... And that's a great tip for everyone at home because that will help open up the fairway, yeah, doesn't exactly it? Yeah, exactly so... right. So I'm not sure if you can see on the camera at home, there's a live screen down there. It's bright white at the moment, so that's just left half of the fairway. That's where I'll ultimately want to get the ball. Um, the bunkers should be no problem, even though it's back into the wind. And um, yeah, just trying to get a strong two iron down there, as neutral as I possibly can, and try and get it bounding down there. But in, into the wind today, it's going to be a pretty tough shot. I know, shot, we so. haven't made this easy, Wade. So talk to us about technique. So you're saying very neutral, so we're thinking like zero, swing path, very straight. Yeah, exactly. Getting very, very technical there. So um, yeah, so I'm just trying to use my body as much as I can, especially in a big pressure situation. It's a tight tee shot, like I said, so you don't want to have too many moving parts going on that we always have in our golf swings. But um, yeah, just try and use your body as much as you can in there, knock all the spin out of it and get it releasing down the fairway. Um, so make sure I aim neutral, neutral to left, maybe ball back in the stance a little bit and try and drive it out there quite low with a neutral running ball flight. Go on then, I know how like, you're excited. Some people to call it a stinger, but my ball doesn't have too much sting in it, so <laughs> we'll see how we go. So I'm just trying to get a feel for my swing. Nice full turn. Something I have trouble doing most of the time. Just wait for some the an amb ambulance, so we wait won't need for the that. ambulance to pass. We might need that in a minute. <laughs> so yeah, just left side of that screen. Down the left half, it's still playing. That works, that works. Go on, let's have another one. So talk to us about the pressure situations. Did it change you know, your strategy and how, how you play in the final round compared to days one and two? Yeah, I actually remember both times I come back here with the lead of the golf tournament. Um, the first time I had a, had a one-shot lead, the other time I had two or three up my, uh, um, up my sleeve. So they're a little bit different, but I remember the first one and um, yeah, I had to wait here quite a while which isn't the best thing like we've just done now <laughs> but um yeah you're just trying to I like to keep moving and then um yeah same same club same shot just trying to get it down there somewhere in play um so yeah you kind of you remember all those feelings trying to win those golf tournaments so um did but, you do anything routine wise to you know calm breathing or is it just going through the motions the first time no the second time I was working with a mental coach and yeah I was doing a lot of breathing exercise and that's I think why I played so well that the, in 2020, I was doing a lot of work with a 
with a golf psychologist or a, and um, yeah that really helped me win that golf tournament but yeah you're always trying to do things stick to your routine and just try and pump out the process and go ahead and hit that solid golf shot. Oh, see another one. I've so. got I've got all the theory there I just got to do it. It's like the M25 right now we've yeah. got a lot of cars Straight over by. these vans. That's the one. That should look good on shock tracer. You happy with that one? Yeah, it's pretty good. How much does your caddy play a part in helping you navigate situations like this? Yeah, we've obviously done all our homework. We've been around this golf course a lot. We've got these yardage books, which I make notes in all the time. And um, got 237 to the top and we're about seven yards forward. So we take that off. So I need to clear 230 yards and then um, get the ball bounding forwards, like I said before, to get to around that 250, 258 mark. And then it goes down the ramp there. And if it gets down there, bonus. If it doesn't, I'm not too worried. I can tell you're secretly still buzzing about that shot you just hit. That was a little bit low in the face, but I hit it pretty <laughs> well, good. It's fine, it's fairway fighter. <laughs> now, you have the same coach as Cam Smith, Grant Field. And you said something very interesting before we came on air about how mentally great he is. Can you share that with everyone? Yeah, so obviously Cam's got so many parts of his game that he's great at and a lot of stuff we don't see is what goes on inside Cam's head. But um, I think Cam's so good at dealing with circumstances and the elements, you know, which is the, like the elements are the wind and then the circumstances trying to win a golf tournament. And he just can, has this wonderful ability just to stay so neutral in those, those uh, situations. And um, that's one of the reasons he's a great player. So um, I just think that's the one thing I can have from Cameron Smith. Um, that would be it. And how would you like embody that yourself? Is it literally if the wind's off the left, just aiming more? To yeah, the you left just got to make the adjustments in your setup, and, and then just try and hit your zero golf swing and go ahead and hit it from there. You know, I play a lot of my golf early in my career, doing it another way, just trying to really feel it, and and um, it just gives you too much room for error. But we're trying to become like robots. We're never going to become like robots, but we have the information with um, TrackMan, with equipment, with uh, video analysis, biomechanics now to become a lot more like robots, but um, we're never going to quite get there, but um, we can break the game down a little bit more. Now, we've seen a variety of shots today. We saw Ram hit one into the trees left. We saw Louis hit a draw into the trees. You know, what do you think of the driver play here? I actually looked at it. Um, Grant, my coach, was trying to talk me into hitting driver down here, even though I didn't get a chance to play, but... Um, um, yeah, I, I absolutely do see it, but I've had too much success with two iron down here, so I keep on going back to two iron. But um, yeah, I can see it because um, it's definitely beneficial if you can get it down there with a short club in here. But um, on top of the hill, you got anywhere between nine iron and seven iron in there, and if, as long as you can get um, a look at that green for two, I think you've done a pretty good job here. So the only bonus is literally just trying to get a shorter club in your hand to attack the pin. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes if you get too close, then you get a kind of funny like yardage in there. You know, we always like over probably over 100 yards. Then we can hit our number quite precisely, especially when the green's raised like this one is, and the pin goes to the right, um, and the water comes into play and so on. So I think um, given the the time of the round that this hole does present itself towards the end when there's pressure on, you know, you just got to get a club in your hand where you can have a look at that green. I feel like two one does that. I'd be hitting wedge. Right. So you're going to drive. I'm going to make you hit a driver quickly. You're going to make a driver? Yeah, I'm going to be on Grant's side. All right. We're going to get your visuals up with the driver. So what will this leave you in with? Well, I think it's going to get, get me down there about 80 or 90 yards out okay. in normal conditions. So give me this ball here. You don't want to mine it, probably. So I'll probably go lower with the tee here, play the ball a little bit back in my stance just so I can hit it lower and um, a little fade down there just left of that screen. Yeah, so similar line still even yeah, though Yeah, similar it's a line. I'll probably move the ball left to right a little bit more. Okay. Then I guarantee the flight. Well, try to. Feels weird hitting driver off here. <laughs> Sorry, Wade. This You're could right. be trying to poison me. <laughs> That'll work. I mean, that is very good. Right, one more thing. Now, us mere mortals at home, including myself, do not hit it as far as you hit it. I hit it probably more similar to what average goal for 250 with driver. Can you caddy me to hit one? Like what I should be going through? Well, you've through? got no choice. You've got to hit driver down here. <laughs> now, the play is you've got to fly the bunkers. That's the number one thing. And they're about 200 
230 odd yards. You're not very well prepared. Okay, so everyone at home, this is similar yardage. So what, tee it down? It's not down, that's quite high. So, so more? Yeah, tee it down a little bit. Okay, so everyone at home, we tee it down, yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, left side of the fairway, you got more margin on the left, trying to hit a low fade down there or whatever your shot shape is. I don't know, right, okay, so Pull back slightly. I'm going to have to simplify it keep for Keep on pivoting, so. which is keep on moving your body. Is that far enough back in the stance? That's got to do. Okay. Oh, I've gone Ram. <laughs> you've gone Ram or you've gone over where Cam was. Oh, if it's so short, it's not in the bunker. <laughs> Wait, are you convinced to hit driver? Um, no, I think I'll stick with my two stick iron. With two iron. But I think in, into the wind today, you probably may need to go more than two iron. But um, no, it's a strong hole and it's always going to be an iconic hole in golf. And then, um, yeah, there's plenty of uh, horror stories down here in golf tournaments. Wade, not for you. Two time winner. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks and for having me. Let's see how much drama we get on 18 this week. Thank you. Thanks. Very impressive, Rachel Drummond. It doesn't matter if you're a golf nerd or just new to the game. It's always so much fun watching Rachel do her thing. The Live Golf Plus app is filled with great content, including an incredible and informative series of lessons from the best players in the world. Hey guys, this is Cam Smith. Hi, I'm Bryson DeChambeau. I'm Bubba Watson. And welcome. Welcome. Welcome to my Live lesson. So if you're like me and you miss fairways, this is when the creativity comes out. Focus on that target. That's what I'm focused on. Pay the man. For me, I just want to make it simple as possible. Tempo for sure is one thing you need to keep an eye on. Cam Smith, he has taken complete control here. I like to aim the putter, make sure that's perfect. Then I take my stance Give it one good look at the hole and hit a good putt. Houdini with the flat stick. Need a golf ball. Here we go. Bryson DeChambeau electrifies the ground. So guys, there's a lot of mysteries around hitting it really far. So that's where psycho mode comes in. Try to get a little psycho with it. Yeah, there it is. That was pepper. Let your body free up. Let things just move more. Don't feel like you're restricted. Can you do that? You're on your way to better golf. We had uh, Charles Howell III join us, and we've talked a lot about Crushers GC, but a team we didn't get to talk about too much is our team leaders of the day, Stinger GC. Jerry, Sue Ann, I got to ask you your take on this team. They are playing some incredible golf. And we'll talk about that in just a few moments here in Club 54 post-round show. All right, I want to talk a little Stinger GC. They are playing some incredible golf. You guys got to watch some. Jerry, you did. Sue Ann, you were with Oosthuizen today. So these guys are playing incredible golf. By the What's way, <laughs> by the way, Stinger GC, <laughs> this morning when I got to the golf course, I think three out of four of them were not feeling too hot today. Uh, really? Yeah, they, they were kind of, uh, had a bit of a cold, I think. You think? I think. A bottle flu? Maybe. Maybe, I, yeah. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't go with that. Here's some of the highlights. <laughs> Let's talk through this. Here we go. This is Brandon Grace out at 16. His second shot uphill of the hole. He's shot three under par today individually. That one almost drops oh. on the fly. Three-pointer. Nearly jarred it. Now, Schwartzel with the long putter here on the sixth for a birdie. He played well last week. He did, he did, and he tied this guy for second place. Captain Louis Oosthuizen, one of the best and most consistent long career players in the game. And Burmester, this is our birdie on the 11th. What a round today from yeah. Burmy. What a round from Burmy. All right, let's take a look at the team leaderboard here. Stinger GC at the top. We spoke about the Crushers doing their thing right behind. And Cleeks, which we didn't discuss at all, did an amazing job today. The highly upgraded Cleeks with Adrian Moronk on the team now. 
But uh, and Samoa and and Kelly Kelly Samoa. I, the Stingers won the very first event. They've always been one of those teams in contention. They also have two guys who've been playing some really good golf before these couple of weeks. Uh, Ustazen and uh, and Burmester won four uh, DP World Tour events mm -hmm. out of four events. They, the Live guys won five in a row actually at one point. So they played really good in the offseason. They didn't get unfortunately awarded with a Masters invitation like uh, like Waco did, but still it's been pretty impressive golf out of them. Well, we are going to get into day two tomorrow. We had a good time here at day one. Thank you for so much for watching Club 54 post round show. Until next time, we'll see you guys there. Peace. <laughs>